In this video, heads will spin and this is the craziest twist in Spawn history revealed. All right, my brothers and my sisters from another mister. This is a comic book breakdown, a full story video of Spawn issue number 300 to 325. I'm breaking it down into two series. The next video is going to be Spawn issue number 326 to 350, Spawn's quest to the throne and all this shenanigans and all this angel and anti-hero and shocking choices and fistfuls of fury. Every Everything goes nuclear and the stories evolve and you will be shocked and heads will turn and plus I got to break this down into two videos because I mean as you know I record these videos on my iPhone there's only so much data and memory and space I have on there before I have to send it to Google Drive in the cloud and two come on now we all hungry for some spawn content and you know your boys got to deliver so before we get into the content links in the description if you wish to add any spawn comic books and or any rated comic exclusives to add to your comic book collection support the art support the industry also, this is a long video. I don't expect you guys to watch this in the same day. You might need to take a break, but then again, you might be entertained and watch it all in one sitting if you're top G like that. Timestamps will also be in the description if you wish to go from issue to issue. And with all that being said, let's get into the content. We begin this issue where we left off from the last issue. Spawn shows Mark his true self. Nasty, grizzly, everything else is just an illusion. Feel free to check out the 299 review if you haven't. Just FYI, I fast forwarded a few pages in this issue just to get to the meat of it. Owl explains to Mark that it's too late for normal and if he doesn't get his head on straight, it'll be too late for him too. Mark responds to him if Owl thinks wrecking millions of lives with his vendetta by controlling the stock market and being cavalier with humanity is not the best way to stop heaven and hell from using earth as its war zone. Spawn wants the world free from heaven and hell, but at what cost, says Mark? He reminds Spawn that his rage is blinding and heaven and hell are retaliating against humanity because of Spawn. Spawn doesn't see it that way. He sees it as they will do their whore regardless and they're never going to stop. Mark asks him if he could really stop heaven and hell by himself. Actually, more like you can't expect to stop them by himself. Owl knows that as he forms back to his spawn symbiote, he needs them together and working together. Heaven and hell working together, allying with one another, serves to his benefit. He's been planning on this for so long. Planning on what, says Mark? The truth says spawn in his fully formed suit. His human form, costume form, the symbiote are nothing but lies. He was even fooled by their illusions on what he's supposed to be. That ignorance cost him his wife, Wanda's life. Mark expresses doubt by asking, what if he fell? Others will come, says Spawn. Right now, he knows exactly where he needs to be. Spawn teleports to Albania. See issue 299, because you knew where to go based on that other guy that he killed. No, no, he didn't kill him, just... He was going to kill him later if his information didn't check out right. Despite Mark asking how would he get back if the worst happens to Spawn, we don't know the answer to that. Spawn is going all in on this. In Albania, that facility is the heart of toxic shipments. It is also a place where Spawn learns that an army of his enemies await him. All these years, the only thing his enemies craved was his power and symbiote costume. He's going to give them that chance tonight. He enters the facility and Spawn is confused. He expected it to be filled with workers, but it's empty. No evidence of anyone. Then a hulking silhouette appears across the warehouse. Hello, Spawn, I've been expecting you. Spawn coldly stares back in silence. This demon gives his speech to Spawn. Did did you think we would just sit there and you have it your way with us? This ain't Burger King, not gonna happen. Tell me, how was it going to work? Were you going to destroy some corporate structure, destroy our political influence? We are everywhere, Spawn. You thought you can destroy an entire infrastructure? Pretty much just trying to make Spawn feel like dumb. Not all of it, says Al. Just enough to get the attention of someone at the top. Well, now you have mine, says the imposing demon. He returns the favor by flashing a light so bright that it catches Spawn off guard and in some pain. Burning pain, that is. You've always been weaker in light, says the demon. He's covered in a black spear protecting his face from the light. He says he's part demon and part vampire. And like you, Spawn, we thrive in darkness. But more importantly, as the demon continues on with the speech, I'm the one you made. Without you, I would never have been able to ascend to my current position. So in an odd way, the pain you're feeling, it's your own making, it's your own doing. You've enjoyed that symbiote suit for far too long. I helped create that suit that you're wearing. I know more about it than you do, Spawn. So before you die tonight, you're gonna see who the true master is. Rise up and 
these chains emerge from the ground and tie spawn to the ground. Chain them up. Immobile can't move. You were never worthy to be a hell spawn. Simmons says a demon. Your kind should have never been given that costume. None of you deserved it. And spawns like you sound like someone I knew. Someone jealous of humans. And I see your tattoo. You must have been an admirer of his. Too bad I decapitated him. He's referencing Malboja. And think of Malboja. I think I might do a spawns origins explain on Malboja. And this guy's like, you must be quite proud, Malboja. You took out Malboja than the clown? Maybe I shouldn't kill you, Spawn. Maybe I should keep you alive. Gon said he emerges out of nowhere. That's not what we agreed to. Ah, glad you could join. Demon tells out, I think that you met my partner. Everyone keeps warning me how powerful and tough you are, Spawn. They said the same thing about Angela and all of her angels. But you know what? Until they met my Seraphim, I wiped them all out. So you are just another failure, in other words. So this guy tells him, one last thing. I want to thank you for transforming me and the funny thing is all I had to do to receive your gift was to kill your wife gut poor little Wanda and just rubbing salt to his wound and spawns like that's all I've been waiting to hear he burst from his chain shoving his spike fist into the chest extracting his heart he takes out his heart and this guy just looks at him like is that all you got God sends like, whoa, dude, that's a little brutal. And then Spawn sees in his eyes through the reflection that his heart opening heals back together and closes up. Surely you can do better than that, says the thing. What are you, says Spawn? Take a look. You always thought I was a joke, a clown. Not anymore as he transforms into the violator, a physically imposing beast that's about to do work on our hero. And we see his power level down to 14 as blood just splats as he goes in for the attack. You try taking our money, our influence, now we're gonna take from you take the only thing you care about by poisoning every last human being on this planet gets to work on spawn wiping the floor with spawn if we can't rule this planet we'll make sure no one else ever wills picks him up plays him up like a rag doll and pierces the top of his head blood gushing out especially not you spawn if we can't have it you can't have it either tosses him to the side puts all these spears inside of him Keep him spawned right in his spot as he's getting ready to do some more torturous and brutal work to him. You're just a fraud like the others, says Godsend. And just like them, you're weak like those in the new Bible. But I am Old Testament, baby, as he gives Spawn another piercing on his shoulder or chest. Either way, Spawn just cannot move. He's near death, says Godsend. Collect what we came for. Like a vulture, the violator begins to pick away at Spawn's flesh. Piece by piece, piece by painful piece, he strips off the symbiote as Spawn takes his last breath. Violator leaves with God saying, you'll get your share of it, let's go. And God says, like, keep your damn costume, says God. So he's just another of hell's failed champions. I don't want that junk. But Spawn hadn't failed. This is what he's been waiting for. Waiting for the perfect time to throw his spark and then light it up. Explosion happens. And for a quarter mile radius, everything is wiped out. The only things left standing are those not born here on Earth. Are you okay, says this clown violator. Look, clown, it's him. Why won't he die? The look of shock in his eyes. I have your costume. I've got your powers. What else are you going to try to do? There ain't nothing you can do right now. Spawn has that look in his eyes. You're wrong, and you've always been wrong, says Al. Then from the ashes, Simmons begins to build his costume from the ground up. First, he takes the ashes from the ground, puts it on his face, then his chains, put it on his body and arm, piercing him up, getting all suited up organic. Organically, I guess you could say. Then his belt takes his skull from the ground and puts it on his midsection. Then he takes his cloak, puts it on. You've been chasing the wrong thing, says Spawn. It wasn't the symbiote that gave me powers that made me what I am. It never was. And finally, he takes the spikes from the ground, puts it in his arm. You can see the pain, but you know what? It hurts so good, doesn't it? The costume didn't make me Spawn because I am Spawn. And that's where we end this issue with Spawn, issue number 300. At the end of the story, we get four bonus stories, Redemption, Lost and Found, Omens, and Prophecies. We're gonna cover all of them. Gotta leave a little meat on the bone with you guys in case you do decide to buy this comic book. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. In the Redemption storyline, issue number 299 teases that Spawn and Redeemer go into this black void. And it goes into their disappearance and what transpired with it. The two are locked in combat as Spawn catapults himself and the Redeemer into the void. It all happens in the blink of an eye as the combatants are consumed by the shadows. Removed from reality to a space where no one else can follow them. They continue to go deeper and deeper as the battle wages on. Redeemer asks the obvious questions. Where have you taken me? It doesn't matter, says Spawn. What matters is your next few decisions, Eddie. The Redeemer denies the existence of Eddie. He says that he was just a vessel and nothing more. No one can save you 
from your final redemption. But Spawn knows he can't win this fight in the air. He hooks his enemy's leg and speeds up as fast as he can until they hit the ground solid. Get up, says Redeemer. Spawn is done fighting and he demands Redeemer to decide what side is he fighting for? What side is Eddie fighting on? Redeemer continues to say that Eddie's dead and he fights for righteousness. Spawn rebuttals that with Redeemer's fight for lies. It's all lies. That's what you fight for. The Redeemer doesn't want to be lectured on morality. How can Spawn lecture on morality when Al accepted Hell's powers, the side that thrives on destruction, on evil? Spawn holds his sword to his neck because they both can't be right. But before Redeemer goes through with the act, Spawn asks him one question. What am I doing that's so much worse than your side? Spawn adds that there is a seed that he planted him years ago and it can't grow if he doesn't let it grow. So a decision has to be made. Kill Spawn or disavow everything that Redeemer knows. We're man's protector, says Eddie slash Redeemer. Everything we do is to serve that purpose. We're not the intruders. Hell is and you bring pain and suffering. Spawn demands that he makes a choice and enough of this back and forth. He does make a choice. The warrior who was Heaven's Redeemer is transformed into an agent of life and death. The first being to claim the mantle of Reaper. Spawn welcomes Eddie back and he tells Reaper that we will make them pay later. But for now, no one can know. So when we go back to continue to serve your role as a Redeemer, until the time is right, then we'll set up the trap, all right? But keep doing what you got to do, Redeemer. But you're Eddie to me. And just like that, they are gone and back to normal time. Up there, so little time was passed, but sometimes it's those tiny moments that we don't see, the things that happen in the blink of an eye that can change everything. Doesn't that sound very poetic right there? We get another story in Almonds, where we have a story involving Nyx and Jessica Priest and how Jessica Priest became She Spawn. I did cover that in She Spawn Origins Explained video. I'll put the card on top and link in description as well to save myself from repeating it. You can also get the full details play for play by reading Almond's story in Spawn issue number 300. Link in description, like I said, if you want to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. In conclusion, Spawn issue number 300 is a giant size issue and the creative force inside of it is something to be reckoned with. There is so much to discover and all fans and new fans alike will find something to enjoy in here. It may not be the best jumping on point, but it's an excellent place to start anyway. You can also check out the history of Spawn review that I did where I did a full story of you based on issues 296, 297. I did do 298 and 299, now 300. I'm going to continue that until we're caught up in the current spawn issues. And I want to thank you guys for watching the content as well. It's really a truly a compliment and for subbing to this channel. Link in description if you want to support us on our other social media platforms or if you want to buy a brother a cup of coffee because I because coffee does fuel these reviews, all right? We begin this issue where we left off in the previous issue. The Violator ripped the symbiote off of Al Simmons thinking that that was the source of his power. Thinking that's what made him spawn. He is spawn. Even without the symbiote, he puts barbed wire, dirt, and impaled himself with spikes to create his costume. This was an epic moment in the last issue. The Violator is confused by this that he believes he controls the symbiote and not spawn. He claims it's growing his power so he can raise an army. In that moment, Hell's demons appears from the shadows, from the ground. Spawn is like, I hope for your sake you have more than that. Violator may control an army, but Spawn is king now. King of the dead! He commands his people to rise up. I wonder if that king moment right there, back in Spawn issue 301, was a foreshadowing to King Spawn. What do you guys think? Comment below, let me know. From the ashes, hundreds of unliving circle clowns army of demons. Violator can't believe what is happening before his very eyes. He believes he was holding Spawn's power because he has possession of his symbiote. Spawn stares at him with intensity and tells him, you're not holding my powers, you're holding a bomb. And he ain't lying. Brother is telling the explosive freaking truth as an intense amount of power slash explosion comes down draining all of his powers in that moment. Bring Spawn's power counter down to zero. It's drained, no more power for Spawn, for now. At that same moment around the globe, a spark has been triggered and a new breed of hell spawn is born. In this panel, I can tell a new artist took over. Sometimes it doesn't bother me. Comment below, let me know what your thoughts are on that. But 10 days later, the UN is attempting to gain entry at the northern border. But they were sent on a false mission with someone leaked intelligence that one of their bases is stockpiling plutonium. Back to the future, anyone? Plutonium, that's what it reminds me of. The experts from the World Council have been able to narrow the seismic activity to a nearby location. And that location is where our boy Spawn did his thing earlier by unleashing an explosive haymaker on them. You know, Violator and the other dude. I can't think of his name right now. 
Elsewhere, Al Simmon makes the rounds of talk shows, finally explicitly being treated as a superhero in his crusade against corruption and injustice that just happens to have an unseated high-level corporate jerks around the world. He did all that work. But moving on with the review and with the content, in Morriston, Tennessee, it's 1.33 in the morning. These two friends walk out the bar drunk AF. One of them says that he should talk to this girl again because he knows she likes him despite getting slapped across the face at the bar. He doesn't call it slap. He calls it a love tap. <laughs> As he tries to locate their car, considering that they don't recall parking so far away, Spawn makes his entry with the two of them known. What did you get? How much money? Surely your bosses gave you something for making the deal for supplying terrorists, huh? How else were they going to be able to slaughter all those women and children? Before he can squeeze the trigger, Spawn vanishes and moves to a more strategic position on top of the Geno sign. The only Geno I thought of in that moment was Geno's Pizza in Chicago. Anyways, the sign falls on top of the car. Well done, says a mysterious man in the shadows. He continues his dialogue by saying, tell me Spawn, this is how you're planning to take us all out, right? One at a time? That'll take years if you plan on taking us out one by one. Maybe, says Spawn. They teleport to an unknown destination. He continues to tell Spawn that the word is spreading in Albany on what Spawn did. Clown slash Violator was the leader of a secret empire. By eliminating the clown or Violator slash Violator, Spawn has created a vacuum. There will be dozens fighting to take his position. Good, says Spawn. That'll make it easier to find them and eliminate them one by one. Then the brother's like, good, start with me then because I want to see what you can do without a real symbiote costume. Spawn's like, man, bro, you won't be that leader, Sansker, because you were never a real threat. Sansker transforms, revealing his true form, a freaking snake. I don't like freaking snakes, but I hate freaking snakes. And if you guys are watching this video that love freaking snakes, you know what? I am not judging, good for you. <laughs> I just can't stand, they terrify the hell out of me. Anyways, back to the content. As Sansker wraps around Spawn, oh, this is freaking gross, man. He grabs a weapon from the wall. He decides this battle is going to get physical. He impels him. He loosens his grip on Spawn, but Sansker's attack on Spawn is more calculated than that. Spawn's powers are limited until he's able to replenish them because of that power drain he did earlier with the bomb, the symbiote costume, he'll need to resist the urge to use his necro powers, even if it means it can save his life. So Spawn will have to lean on his military training instead. We're going back to basics, bro. After slicing a piece of his tail off, Sangster tells Spawn that he's improved his skills, but even if you kill me, others will come. Spawn can kill him where he stands, but he is worth more alive than dead to Spawn. So Spawn leaves him with the message to relay to everyone else. Tell your side how weak I am. Tell them how superior you are, Sangster. And while you are gluting all your greatness, gloat away, just gloat. Ask yourself, why after all these years, why no one has killed me yet? And if any of them want to come after Spawn or after me, before I hunt them down, tell them to bring it on. I'll be waiting as Spawn disappears into the shadows. And that's where we end this issue or we end this review. I gotta leave a little meat on the bone with you guys because this is a classic issue. If you do decide to purchase this book, link in the description. There are other stories in this book like Arsenal, Brotherhood, Sacrifice. I went over two stories. So there's a total of five stories in this book. I went over the first two, the last three. I gotta leave a little meat on the bone with you guys. My favorite part of it is Sacrifice as well as Arsenal. Sacrifice because we're introduced to the, you know, the appearance of Ninja Spawner whatnot and i think that's really cool i imagine ninja spawn is going to make an appearance in later issues but overall i was able to understand and engage with this issue and i enjoyed it very very much even though the con the continuity and the art is touche but you know it was an interesting reading experience that i had a, and i had a blast reading it. i think you guys will too in this issue in a part with all these beer bottles on a coffee table and this couple's arguing about this dude so you did everything he said i swore to you i didn't do anything i didn't hurt him so they're arguing he's beating her up like is it true why did he call that he was lying he was hurting me she said but it wasn't even the whole point of this panel right here it's just the start just to set the tone for this issue every minute of every day across the globe there exists those who derive pleasure in seeing others suffer and there are those who casually disregard the pain and humiliation they inflict upon their victims all in the name of power prestige and domination dangerous ambitions driven by the one thing that's that's in all of us greed the deadliest sin of all the seven sins spawn's sick of it he's seen enough to last a lifetime it's why his new personal mission is to make him stop even he has to hunt all of them down one by one until he makes them all stop 
Whatever their birthright, demon, angel, or human, he doesn't care who they are. If they attempt to impose their will on another living soul, they'll become his next target. And then we see this news anchor talking about violence is escalating these killings across New York and it's coming across the five bor boroughs, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, all similar attacks. According to sources, each victim may have had a felony record for extreme violence. If so, this may suggest that we may have some type of vigilante on our hands. And they're referring to Spawn when he went live on the media in the last issue. So in this restaurant, these gentlemen get their bill and this waitress tells them, hey, I hope you enjoyed the taste of your meal. She's like, mm. And this guy's like, well, I enjoyed the taste of something else. Come on, girl, walk away nice and slow. So moments later, Spawn comes in like, you don't do all that. And they think their Spawn's just like coming out the shower. like, what are you doing here? Move, I sit down, we about to have a little chat. And his brother's like, you can't just waltz up in here and start demanding shit from us. Just because you did that little stunt in Albania, whatever you did back there, we know what you did, but it wrecked you and we're all coming after you. So every Everyone, I mean everyone, has been marked. And it's only a matter of time before you get tagged. So Spawn, you better play it cool. And Spawn's like, okay, are you done with your little tough guy speech? Because I'm not the one sweating over here. You are. Well, you're hiding, aren't you? Hiding, Vinny. I'm right here, baby. I ain't hiding from nobody. Look at me. I ain't got no symbiote on. You call this hiding? I'm out in the open. But Spawn's like, but well, we can discuss this for another day. What I need to know is take me to your douchebag boss, the one who's training kids and teens across into sex slaves. And I only want to hear one word from you, Vinny, and that is, okay, this is where he's at. And Vinny's like, I don't know about all that, man. You can't come up in here waltzing in like that. And Spawn's like, all right, good. Do me a favor. Make me pull this trigger. I like nothing more than to pull this trigger right now. Because for all your talk, I know you've also heard what's been happening to some of your friends out there. Because you know why? They're all dead. You want to be dead too? Keep pissing me off and see what happens. So the young waitress doesn't make eye contact as the men leave as she sees him leaving. Internally, Vinny gave Spawn the answer he needs. So when she goes back to the table, sees that note and a couple bucks for her troubles, it's all good. Now we go on to the next panel. This is where the boss is at. The poker game these men have each week is a mostly social event for them. It's also a drop point for their incoming shipments. What kind of shipments, you may ask? The suffering of shackled youth is an afterthought to him. That's their shipment. The boss doesn't flinch, and he sees all these children coming in like, mm, yeah. So one of the comrades tells the boss, hey, you know what, Out, he's here, boss. Who? Simmons. And he turns around to see Simmons, and he doesn't even flinch at all. He allows himself a smile as he notices guns tucked in between Spawn's belt. And Spawn's like, take those chains off for the children. And the boss is like, why? They're fine. And besides, they need a job. That's why they're here. I know you don't like that, but there's not much you could do about that. And I'm guessing that's why you're here carrying those handguns. Not very impressive. Look, even those kids seem disappointed in you, Simmons. But if they're dead, it won't matter, will it? And he draws a gun to one of the girls' head. And he's like, okay, I can't shed innocent blood in the name of something greater. So Spawn puts his hands up. They take the guns away from him. Now glues the costume. Those of us from heaven don't have the stomach to look at hell's abomination or abortion. So yeah, as the symbiote dissipates, Al steps back into the shadow slightly. And the boss tells him, look, you demons don't like the light, do you? Screws up your powers, doesn't it? And Spawn's like, well, it can but not all of it. And he takes these guns out the shuttle so he want to work on his own foes. Now the mistake everyone's been making about Al is they've forgotten that he has years of specialized military training. Before he ever became Spawn, he was capable of surviving purely on those skills and instincts. And as we learned in issue 300 and 301, the symbiote is not Al's true power. The man, Al, is his true power. And though he's trying as hard as he can to conserve his powers, Al knows there, won't, there will be times that that won't be possible. But in most cases, it'll be worth it. And he frees the sex slaves out of there. So Al was like, okay, now that my mission's complete, your men are dead and the slaves are free, let's finish it once and for all. The only downside being that Spawn's own senses will temporarily be diminished as he is right now. And as this demon looks up, turns into, morphs into a demon and is about to devour him or take a big chunk out of Al, he gets blasted and it's Jessica Priest. And Jessica Priest, like something's happening with your powers out and it's affecting more than just you. And that's where we end this issue. Now there's a night terror epilogue. It's a few short pages of Jessica Priest encountering with the with the violator that's gonna push the spawn story forward. I'm gonna leave a little meat on the bone if you guys wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Link in description, by the way. My personal opinion, this is not a bad jumping point on spawn for new spawn readers and spawn alike, because you get a little bit of history of Al, you know he's in the CIA, it's interesting, you got hell, demons, and, he, and obviously it's telling the plot point from there. Hell Hunt, he's taking them out one by one. And I absolutely enjoy this read, and I know you will too. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. 
in Hell Hunt Part 1, which we're now in Hell Hunt Part 2, Al Simmons carries on his pursuit to eradicate the evil that treats the world as its playground, simultaneously gaining recognition as a vigilante by the press. So as he's fighting She Spawn, Spawn knows who Priest was. He understands she once aligned herself with his own goals and that she fought on his side that was years ago. Since then, he's seen more portrayals of former allies than he could count. He also seen enemies cloak themselves in the guise of others. So his first instincts are to act first, ask questions later. Or to put it more simply, he has a new rule. Trust no one. Consider everyone a potential enemy until proven otherwise. And though he has to battle trying to use as little of his powers as possible, he's still a force to be reckoned with with the CIA training. He wraps up Jessica Priest in his chains. Ow, it's me, Jessica. Damn, what's wrong with you? What are you doing? Why are you here? Because they killed her. She's dead, says Jessica Priest. Next, they kill Nix and things are happening. Things you can't control. Prove it, says Spawn. Look what you've done to me as her eyes go green. He loosens his chains. Your eyes, how'd you do that? Jessica's like, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. She pulls out her gun. He pulls out his. Whoa, what kind of fight is going on over here without no context that it sounds wrong or it sounds right. <laughs> Jokes aside. So she pulls her gun to his chin and Jessica says, so do you want to talk or do we keep dancing? But turns out Spawn has the gun on her too. Your choice. He has the gun in her midsection. She has the gun to his face. Pull the trigger. But you know what? She's not afraid and Spawn needs to know why. Wise move, says Jessica, as, as Spawn retracts the gun from her. So here's the deal. Nix was doing research on you. After seeing you on TV when a bunch of crazy shit started happening, she wanted to find out who some of the shadow players are and why they started acting scared when you became on TV. She called me in a panic. She said she found something and I tried to get there fast, but I couldn't reach her fast enough. Spawn just stands there and he, and he just does nothing. Look at you, you're pathetic. What is it? Everyone's your enemy now or you just don't care anymore, Spawn. Why were they after her? Why? What did you do? They needed something from her. What was it? Her powers? Well, I got them now, but I'm not the only one. Look at her phone. Look at this map. Spawn looks at the phone and the map. He's like, okay, we can't do this here. We got to go somewhere else. Calmly, he walks Jessica into the shadows as they go back to Spawn's hidden lair. Mark is like, yo, what is this? Oh, what's behind you, Spawn? It's okay. She's with me. Really? I thought you said, are you insane? You said to never breach this place. You said to never have other members come along in here. And now you're bringing this other person? You're right. I did say that, says Spawn. But you know what? Things are different now. What does that mean, says Mark? Show him. So Jessica goes into she spawn form and Mark is like, okay, yo, is that your sister or what? <laughs> no, man, I don't have a sister, but she needs something for you to decipher. That phone, that GPS thing that she showed spawn early in the previous panels, Mark is like, okay, is it encrypted? We don't know, but we're hoping you to be able to tell us the owner died over whatever may be on there. And Mark is like, well, it looks like it has a security firewall that has been reverse coded. So whatever was transferred to this, it got erased from the original hard drive it came from. So if I'm right, then this is the only record of whatever information is inside of here. I should be able to run a patch in between this and couple servers to descramble and code for her. You know, I can find out what this is. And it's not gonna take me long. Just give me a couple minutes. So he decodes it and the heat mapping is tied to some kind of energy release that displays on the screen. So in other words, is it spawn force and spawn? like no man it's my necroplasm whatever you want to call it, says jessica she found embers of it scattered around the globe if this is current there's 12 locations where someone's carrying that kind of energy 12 says spawn i only hit five of them what are you saying spawn years ago as a precaution al buried a sliver of his symbiote in five people in case he ever died there needed to be a backup plan but there was only five but now there's 12. So she spawn tells out, I keep telling you, a rift opened when you killed Clown and Godsend. And Spawn's like, how do you know that? I don't know, I just do. But it doesn't matter. What I can't determine is whether those 12 carriers want to help you or kill you. And Jessica P puts it all together. She was one of them, wasn't it? She was one of the, she was, Nick was one of the symbiotes you put in her. I bet you didn't know you put it in her. What did you do? Did you just shove it in her without giving her a choice, Spawn? Why? Hmm, like I said, I need to have a backup plan. So that's what they're looking for, says Jessica. They're looking for her and that symbiote. But why are they taking that symbiote from her? So meanwhile, in the Vatican, three months earlier, we get these brothers right here. 
talking about they lost an agent while they were over there, but they got an email from the Pope that they're that the Pope is having concerns about his captive. And what that captive is, they're gonna take a peek behind this door, and this captive is pissed. So this captive is, and they're talking about they still don't know why they gave him this suit of armor. They thought they were concerned that it had some kind of mystic powers. Inside the prison, so an enormously sized man thrashes around like a crazed banshee. And then this agent's like, yo, we made these, we made this armor to calm him down, but until today, it seems to have triggered him. Should we notify anyone? No, mm, not yet, says the other agent. He could bang on that door till he's blue in the face, but nothing's gonna happen. Besides, they just installed the, sec the secondary security equipment. So let me see if that's up and running. So that agent calls on agent, you know, reports to his microphone or reports in his headpiece. And he's like, yo, this is Agent Wilma. Does anyone on your end know if the new grid is working? Well, the project was complete last week in Albania, so you think we can give, give access to it? And here's the password, turn it on, confirming now. So they do that open the door now and they pry the door open but the prisoner doesn't do anything because he's paralyzed with all this light beaming in he they receive instructions from one of the partners that they found whatever this knight in shining armor is made of it hates the light because they don't make demon babies like they used to so tell the pope's entourage there's nothing to worry about down here and that's one of the necroplasm errors that's displayed on mark's screen and that is the end of this issue i gotta leave a little meat on the bone because there's a couple bonus stories in here about nicks and about jessica priest and i believe that story Jessica Priest was already told in the previous issue in black and white but that was a printing issue so Tom McFarlane wanted to do something in color on this one in terms of a story I, I mean I'm a Spawn fan I like Spawn a lot as you can tell when I do these reviews so reading this it's, it sets up more of a world building for 12 other Spawns really yo man I'm interested in what's gonna happen with that so it's definitely more of a filler to world build but dude I'm waiting for that action on this hell haunt when, when Spawn starts taking people down one by one that's what I signed up for but other than that I'm okay with the story building link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry with all that being said we begin this issue in the blistering cold winter in the border of Canada. Foolishly, Ed Frank thought he could just escape his past, disappear someplace until he figured things out. This is a redeemer in human form. But he knew that was just a dream. Heaven wasn't just going to let him change sides. They invested too much into becoming their great warrior. They called him the redeemer. And until last week, that's all he thought he'd ever be. Then he made a choice once forced upon by spawn and then there's these two brothers that are ages they're like we have a visual on our target he's been hiding in a small town on the canadian border i think he's aware of our presence but he hasn't engaged us yet well then the other intercom was like is he in his human form where is he at and then they're talking about well he's trying to lose us in the crowd and i don't think he wants us to fight him in public and the other voice on the intercom was like well that's too bad for him your orders are to eliminate the target by any force necessary and we want to send a loud and aggressive message to the world rest of the world do you understand oh and these brothers do know the assignment but it's a brutal assignment nonetheless and in the heartbeat the carnage begins without a moment's pause before the savage slaughter they're going to inflict they start shoot at the crowd women santa claus angels children everyone gets some of this action gets some of the smoke no one is safe from any of this smoke and instead of standing his ground or taking on his new form, he chooses to flee, not even taking a chance to form into Redeemer and fight this out. You coward, says one of the gunmen, and he gets shot in the leg. You know what God does to traitors? He shoots them in the snow like a deceased dog. And that's where we end this panel. We go into the next panel with She Spawn, Spawn, and Mark in base. And She Spawn's like, did you even think about what you were doing? That they'd come looking for everyone? All of us? Did that even cross your mind? And Spawn's like, look, man, I know you're upset about Nick getting killed yes i am upset but don't condescend me spawn it's because of you she's dead and it, she spawn and spawn get into an argument like what do you want from me hey you know what i want to stay alive these powers i didn't want these powers and spawns like, well you got them now well and so mark's like yo yo can i suggest something and their eyes glowing green they're like no mark like angry ass parents don't tell us what to do we are the parents you're just a kid up in here so with the emotions running high for everyone mark's intrusion creates the awkward science they all needed to get things together so spawn's like look man i promise nix wasn't supposed to die I was, not her. It was why I planted slivers of my costume and five other people so they can take over once I was gone. So they're like, so you're planning on killing yourself? And Spawn's like, yeah, I tried that. 
but it didn't work. And the only way to make sure that things work was to get heaven and hell in the same place with the same agenda. That's why I let them jail me, why I went public with my identity to confuse them. I hit their business and turned their media on them. And of course they were going to hunt me, but their alliance gave me the chance I finally needed. But when I triggered my bomb, it was supposed to kill all of us. And this is going back to issue 300. So Mark's like, so you were planning on killing yourself? Spawn's like, yeah, if I had to. Well, it had the opposite effect because your spawn force is multiplying. Do you even know who or what they are or whether you have any control of them? And Spawn's like, like I said, I know where I planted my five seeds, but the others, the other, you know, the other seven that are showing up on the map, because there's a total of 12, I have to make a determination about them when I hunt them down. And he suggested how we separate the five from my, what I know of the rest. And Mark's like, well, there's one up in North Dakota that's sending the same core reading as a dead zone in New York. In fact, it seems to have originated from New York. And she spawns like, okay, boys, I'm about to be on glue because all I care about with any of those blips, if any of them have a connection to Nick's. And if they do, I know where I'm going. And spawns like, well, it's Eddie, that angel called Redeemer. It has to be up in New York. Yeah, that's by the Canadian border, right? At least that part of New York. So Mark's like, then you're right. It has to be him, but something's wrong. His movement pattern is pretty erratic since I picked up his signal. It's probably because they're hunting him, says Spawn. So Mark said, Jesus, you said they were trying to hide from the public? These aren't the same numbers, says Spawn. They're another breed. And she Spawn's like, well, I'm coming with you. And Spawn's like, good. I could use all the help I could get. And she Spawn's like, good. I could use a little bit of anger release. <laughs> My mind went somewhere else with that kind of release. Anyways, back to the review though. Meanwhile, half a world away in the Vatican City, these two guys are talking about how they've been able to ascertain the origins of the new signal because they think it's tied to like Benny incident, which is a previous spawn issue. I believe it's spawn 300 or 301. I believe it's 300, but luckily I did reviews from spawn 298 all the way up to 304 and then a gap from 314 and on, which I'm trying to catch up with this whole spawn comic book review journey, which has been fun lately. So, and thank you guys for, for your support and watching these videos, by the way. So back into the review, they're pretty sure that with those signals came and they came off the board immediately after Spawn and Clown fought. So they have to assume that those readings are from that when Spawn and the Violator fought. So somehow this guy is like, so somehow Spawn kills Clown and one of Heaven's top operatives, then magically starts multiplying himself. Is that what you're saying? And they're like, what I'm saying is, we're monitoring the situation, but it's too early to determine if these new forces are coming from Hell's side or Heaven's side. Then this guy's like, okay, well then let's find out now. If we're at war with more spawns, that's a huge problem. It's time to release our hunter. So in a subterranean basement below the Vatican, one person's like, kill all the lights. We see medieval spawn with the lights and the lights just kind of paralyze him. Not kill him, but paralyze him, immobilize him. And medieval spawns like, oh, all right. You know, I'm kind of shaking, getting my bearings here. So the Pope is like, we know you like the darkness better. And we both know you've been down here a very long time. Constantly screaming about your righteousness, about your devotion. Well, my son, the Lord has sent me a message. He wants you to perform a mission for him to prove if you're truly one of us. Because there are forces at play who want nothing more than to discredit us from the rest of the world. And sadly, some of those who mean to destroy us are rogue agents from heaven. He's talking about the Redeemer right here that's on the run from these agents. Or they're traitors, loyal to only themselves. We need you to find out who these new intruders are. Who do they work for? Satan? God or spawn. And once you determine those answers, kill those who you seem deem unworthy. Now we see that Redeemer is on the run. Medieval spawns about to go on a hunt. She spawned and spawned about to go after Redeemer to get after him because his signals are going off the charts. Everyone's on the hunt for one another. And Medieval spawns like, your soul child, it's time you laid it there. And that's where we end this issue. And I'm going to leave a little meat on the bone because in the second chapter, there's a there's a second book called The Miracle within this issue. I'm going to leave that for you guys to review, for you guys to read. Little, little meat on the bone, so to speak. If you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection, link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. My thoughts on this, I love, I, I love this story arc of the Hell Hunt. I love Spawn going after, you know, spawns and heavens and hell's agents one by one by locking up the dead zones and i think this is a gangster read it's a very fun read and she spawn and spawns dynamic at least being introduced to it it's a gangster fun time to me and not to mention i know spawn said he slivered he slipped a piece of his symbiote into five other people but what are the seven all about that's what i'm curious about and this is getting interesting and i'm looking forward to continue on with this with this issue as well as 305 and beyond so with all that being said
Now, just to sum it up, Eddie Frank is hunted by violent agents of the afterlife in a small North Dakota town. Spawn and his allies work to track the all-powerful anomalies that have appeared across the grove. Meanwhile, Medieval Spawn arrives in North Dakota, and Eddie's troubles have only just begun. So in this town of West Hope, North Dakota, this unassuming town has lived quietly for 175 years but their obscurity has just been shattered on a national level. Because 20 minutes ago, these two gunmen who are heaven's angels opened fire at a nearby holiday celebration, killing over a dozen people. The motive for the shooting was simple. For those involved, a new spawn mysteriously emerged there and dark hidden forces see any additions to the ranks of hell spawns as a giant threat. One force unleashed their prisoner, a former spawn from medieval times, medieval spawn. While the gunmen, angel warriors in human disguise were sent by heaven's servants to eliminate that threat. Now spawn and Jessica Priest, she spawn emerged. Take him out before he changes. Boom! Unfortunately for them, Spawn and She-Spawn don't give a damn about anything heaven or hell may want. And one of the angels like, you bitch, that's your best shot? <laughs> this is gonna be easier than I thought. And his transformation happens in seconds where he transforms into this hideous looking angel, man. But Jessica Priest, She-Spawn ain't got no time for that. Screw you, and she blasts his head off. I mean, literally, she blasts his head off. Leave the boy alone, says Spawn. And he goes to work on medieval Spawn. And these bullets are just bouncing off his head like, bro, that don't phase me. Medieval Spawn turns his attention towards Spawn. This man, Al Simmons, is a traitor he's been looking for all this time. And the stench of hell tells the armored assailant that his quest may finally be over. So we go back to Jessica Priest looking at Eddie. Are you Eddie? What's your name? Yes, I'm Eddie. I think. No, he's, he's just all like all up in the loop. Like, you're coming with me then. She picks him up like he's some kind of ragdoll, nearly slapping his neck in the process because Jessica is still learning the limits of her newfound powers. And the half thing, 160 pound millennial over the shoulder isn't much of a test. We need cover and she runs to the nearby woods hoping to buy some time from the angel she knows is just wounded. More importantly, she needs to take this confrontation away from the public's eyes. Sirens blur in the distance as police and fire trucks descend upon the recent carnage this other angel's tending to his wounds. But for those involved, this is far from over. Around the corner, Spawn is holding his own, going to work on medieval Spawn, though he's not sure why he's fighting. What appears to be another spawn? Is this armor class spawn an enemy? Maybe he was just trying to protect Eddie and now he's just reacting to a hostile attack from spawn. At least from what it appears. Whatever it is, spawn needs to keep himself healthy enough to find out. No more, says medieval spawn. Your reign of terror is over. Me and he kicks spawn, knocks him back. Medieval spawn corners his victim, ready to deal his death blow. But in his enraged state, he's forgotten one of the rules from hell. Never let us spawn near the shadows. For the darkness serves as a travel for Hellspawn. As he goes into a pelham, he gets transported into the other side and he trips. Why are you doing this? We're spawns, not enemies. I know them. They want this. They want us to kill each other. Then we'll be out of their way. But this spawn is wasting his breath. Medieval spawn won't relent. And from a distance, she spawn wonders what she's supposed to do if she has to go about this alone. As she sees spawn fight medieval spawn and she thinks she has to help him. So she goes to help Al and tells Eddie to hide himself. Her attention transfixed on the two spawns, she doesn't hear the muffled crunching of the snow from behind them, or the shallow hiss as Heaven's Angels takes his true form and prepares another onslaught. This Heaven's Angel goes up from behind her and pushes her, slash, whoop, Eddie, run, get out of here. Instead, Eddie doesn't run. A primal scream echoes through the trees for years as he transforms into this reaper. For years, Eddie's soul has been taken over by the godlike creature called Redeemer, bent on destroying Spawn. Years which Eddie was essentially a slave with no dominion over his own body. But now, the Redeemer has been cast aside, replaced by the reaper, and this time, Eddie is fully aware of his actions. Eddie! Eddie is just a part of what I am. We share this. Behind you, says she Spawn. He turns as a mini solar flare lights up the skies and this beam of energy goes through and through through this angel. I mean, literally through and through. In the baptism of fire, Reaper claims his first conquest. Heaven shudders at the sight of his angels killing one another with such fury, with such magnitude. What was that, says she spawn. I didn't mean to scare you, I'm sorry. I know they're kind, says Reaper. I live with them. They never rest until they get what they want. What is that, destroying us, says she spawn. No, they want us dead. They want to control us so they can harvest our powers. Most followers, the faithful, willingly give them everything. For those that resist, heaven 
takes it from them however they can. So God's a thief, says she spun. When necessary, oh my God, that's insane. All insanity for that's been years. Al Simmons has been battling on his own. Medieval Spawn bolts for his hell forged sword. You can't move it, says Spawn. What have you done, says Medieval? I spoke to your weapon. It will no, it will not no longer respond to you. Liar! Well, try as he may be, but the blade won't budge. It obeys me, says Spawn, not you. It only wants to be held by its true master, not a fright. And I believe this is a callback to when Spawn decapitated Malboja's head in hell. So now Spawn is technically the rightful heir to the throne of hell. So maybe that's what referring to but i'm sure someone out there has more knowledge of spawn than i do car below let me know if i'm on the right track or that's a good theory or whatever your thoughts are or what the facts are i want to know myself so medieval spawn's like drop it demon stop desecrating <laughs> My mind went somewhere else on that. So as Medieval Spawn goes in for the la for the launch, he makes one last effort to reclaim what he believes is his. And with that attempt, Spawn decapitates his head. A creed that has been broken. One that until now had stood since the creation of darkness itself. A rule so unholy that every creature and denizen of hell knew the passage by heart. Spawns do not kill spawns. Now with the helicopter lights honing in on their location, Spawn has no choice but to wrap them in their cape, in his cape, away and go to the safe house. It's a destination that no one but Spawn can locate. And sorry, Mark rose and monitors the movement of the other new signals that have appeared across the globe. He also has been listening to new accounts of what transpired in North Dakota. And the fact a mass shooting occurred as a direct consequence of Spawn's action sickens him. Spawn tells Mark ready the lab to observe medieval spawn and she spawns like that's all you've got to say for yourself people are dead because of you and mark's like is it as bad as they say it's on tv it's worse the enemies chase the owl they don't care about anything says she spawn they're soulless and if you two and if the two of them will slaughter a group of innocent bystanders what happens when al pisses off an army of them mark's like we can argue about that later but for now who's that guy and what's the pile of debris and spawns like it's a spawn of some kind except it sure as hell isn't on my side he jumped on me as soon as he saw me and so you just killed him said mark well just analyze what's left of him you know i mean because i want to know exactly what was inside this thing if somehow i create a bunch of frankenstein spawns i like to know if any of them are going to be on my side because if i can't even trust other spawns then we're all in trouble and i can't fight my kind too not if i'm going to survive this long term and then reaper's like well his weapon use it to your advantage right turn their weapon against him oh i'm I'm going to I'm going to do more than turn the sword against them, says Spawn. It takes Spawn over three minutes to pry the ectoplasmic goo from the decapitated helmet because Spawn's immune to it, but Mark is not. So he has to be careful or else the acid will go through his skin. So Spawn tells Mark there's a container room down the hall. It'll hold this until we can dissect it. And she spawns like, then what? Do you have a plan or are you just winging everything as you go along? You know what? I want to be a part of this, but if we're just going to go into every mission blind, that's a suicide. I'm not, I'm not with that. Well, no one's keeping you here, She Spawn. You're more than welcome to leave whenever you want. Oh, no, no. Don't gaslight me, says She Spawn. They keep killing everything around you. So if you're going to give, so if you give a shit about anyone in your life, I think you'll know damn, every damn detail of the plan. I'm tagging along with this mission. Reaper's like, she's right. Heaven, hell, they're never going to rest. I get your skepticism, you're both new to this, but every time the enemy moves, they expose themselves. I got eyes that are watching them, says Spawn. Meanwhile, while all this back and forth is going on, the head of this medieval Spawn lights up and his eyes go fiery. Suddenly, a liquid abyss engulfs Spawn before he can react. What follows will be a nightmare like nothing he can imagine. And that's where we end this issue, and that's where we end this story arc of Hell Hunt Part 4. I thought this was fantastic. I'm looking forward to see what this dark vision of a dark future story arc is all about. This is a gangster. I love how this issue is just action, action, action. You have no time for breathing. Action, action, action. The end, by the time you get some time to breathe, now we get we kick off a whole new story arc that's a whole new nightmare that I'm eager to get into. And if you stick around for this channel, like the video, subscribe to this channel, I will be doing that review as well. Now, before we get into this issue, I'm just going to break down what happened previously on Spawn. Spawn and She-Spawn race to save Eddie from the dangers that haunt him in the aftermath of a violent mass shooting. Arriving in a place 
North Dakota, the town, the duo find themselves confronted by a pair of vengeful, heavily soldiers in human disguise. Worse, the Vatican has dispatched medieval Spawn to capture or kill Eddie. As she Spawn fights to protect Eddie, Spawn faces off against the armored medieval Spawn, and he is killing the hulking knight before a strange new threat emerges in the cliffhanger ending that continues now. Now, as we go into this issue, guys, in this panel, after reading this issue, this definitely throws you off in a loop, and I encourage you to watch to the end because it is definitely a mind fuck. But at the same time, I think you'll like it. I hope you enjoy it, and I know we'll get the answers in the second issue. The writers definitely took a risk and a gamble on this one, but just I just encourage you to watch to the end, and I will be reviewing Spawn issue 307 as we hopefully get some answers on this thing, all right? So Al thought his battle was over, that the enemy was defeated, but as Spawn's endless wars, there's always a new threat. It happens quick. A strange glowing substance consumes Spawn in its infernal grasp. She Spawn tries to save Al, but they, but they try and it's too late. Shocked! She Spawn and Reaper now wonder what the hell they're supposed to do now. Spawn, he just gets sucked in into this pitch darkness. Whatever they do, it won't come close to being used because Al Simmons, this new nightmare he's entered in, is only the beginning. He feels like he's falling, being sucked downward into a pitch darkness. But then he hears voices, fight it, resist it, the way you've done your whole life. You've gone through too much to fail now. Don't let them win. Not now. Not after these years. We need you. The voice screams inside Al's skull, squeezing his brain. And just like that, he's about to black up, but the voice whispers one last word. Please. I mean, it's probably not exactly how it sounds. It probably sounds more like a demonic please. But <laughs> I'm just going. <laughs> Forgive me here, all right? So the same word echoes across a time barrier through a continuous spectrum from Earth in the future. Okay, time traveling, a spawn on Earth in the future. Future. Who is his brother? Right, I, I'm gonna do the best I can to break this down to my understanding and my opinion. But I encourage comments and feedback below if you guys already know about this issue. A few minutes earlier, this man who has dubbed the hero had defeated a small army of attackers, but that small victory only led to the arrival of a massive 40 foot enemy. And just as the fight was to begin anew, the hero suddenly froze, leaving himself exposed to the coming onslaught of the hulking giants. Ow, I'm not out. Or am I? No way. I'm the Raptor. I mean, to your left, says a voice off screen. Is this Owl in the future? I don't know what this is, but we're going to go with it. Ooh, this hand emerges. She thought, whoever this girl is, she thought she was helping him at a crucial moment in their battle to obtain the heart of heaven. She just made things far more worse and far more dangerous for the both of them. What have I done? She said, whoever this girl is. Though she used her powers like this in the past, it's never had an effect this badly on her partner. So the partner's are okay, I can work with that. Raptor, damn it, move, what's wrong with you? Try as he may might, Raptor can't seem to find any coherent balance as he grapples trying to control this enemy's mind. Giving the creature the legion of a thousand angels a chance to strike. Run, get out of here before he kills you. I've called for help, said this girl. You did it. You know what your prayers do to me? I had to, said the girl. Who? Who did you send for me this time? It doesn't matter. Just please go. I wonder if she secretly called for Al Simmons' help. Uh, ugh, okay, enough with the theory. Just go on with the story. No, not without you. I won't leave. But this Raptor's thoughts, his thoughts continue to snap back and forth, flashing memories he shouldn't have. He's losing himself to the madness. And because the chaos playing out in his brain is paralyzing him, he's unable to react. We'll die if you don't get out of here, says the girl. It's too late for me. So save yourself, says the girl. Boom! Raptor and this explosion happened. I don't know what the heck happened. Whatever this explosion is with this beam of energy or whatnot. Victorious! The enemy bask in flames and ashes. His lord has sent him down from the heaven with the command to slay those opposing his will. Raptor had long been one of the gods' fiercest opponents as well, as being one of the most mysterious humans walking the planet. All because of his Latin powers, which enable him to bond with others. Claudius, can you hear me? So now we got the Raptor's consciousness communicating with Claudius. My memories are being attacked but if you don't survive, there won't be anyone left to save all those we've, all, we've lost. Or maybe we've just been fools. Maybe the legends are true. Maybe we'll be rewarded with something on the other side. So now at this moment of defeat, it seems like he's accepted the defeat instead of fighting to conquer. No, that's a lie, says Claudius. They'll kill our families that want us to give up hope because we will see them on the other place. It's all a lie. Then listen to me, says Raptor. As I say, because the longer I'm away from my body, the harder this will become. But your family, do you ever think of reuniting with? She says, ow, he 
The raptor says Wanda. What are you saying, says Claudius? Who's Wanda? Now you're confusing them and you're confusing us, says the reader. I don't know. Just close your eyes and find me wherever I'm at, says raptor. So she does that without even knowing what she's doing. All Claudius does is think of the same emotion flowing through raptor at the moment. The emotion called love and this huge energy beam of explosion just, em just erupts and just hits him. And with her connection made, it pulls Raptor from his own dark ether back into the presence. Though he silently wonders who Wanda is and Al, though something seems vaguely familiar of being called Spawn. And he's like, okay, are you all right? I think so, how about you? I'm good, says Raptor, but something doesn't feel right. But I thank you for finding me. As I hold the crown to the heart of the heaven, there is a chance we all can actually win this war. They both let that thought sink in. Is it possible now they have enough power to, power to truly take on all their ruthless enemies? And Claudius is like, I don't get it. We've won, at least for now. Why are you looking at me like that? It's not just you. It's just when the angel consumed me, there was a moment where I stopped fighting and I embraced what was going to happen to me next. That can't be. You're not remembering, right? He's like, no, I am. And that's when the invasive memory swallowed me. You're talking crazy, man. Our powers are bond. That's not how it works. But I have to ask you, you called out a name, Wanda. Who is she? And elsewhere inside of an unknown prison complex, we see this brother in, in, in dark, you know, creepy, silhouette evil, sinister silhouette, whatnot, saying that this brother took the bait. He fell for it like I knew he would. Raptor's ego has always been where he's most vulnerable. And soon our time will come when the wrongs will be righted and those that they see so casually dismissed as being too weak will once again sit upon the throne. I wonder if they're like foreshadowing King Spawn throne or whatnot. And it'll be self-righteous heroes that will be punished for their crimes and all will be back as it should be everything in its right place isn't that right billy and we see billy kincaid like yeah that's right well when that happens what will you do i'm going to make them scream and scream and scream yes okay so as raptor and claudius are sitting them oh, they're the last humans on earth or the last people on earth or whatnot but as claudius and raptor sit looking at a moon has been <laughs> Taking a bite, not taking a bite out of like a Snickers candy bar or whatnot. They're talking about how they think their ancestors knew that they were creating a future for us, that it would be this bad, that everything will be like this, like this nightmare. Is this nightmare gonna end someday? And they're talking about, I hope it would, because it'll be nice for things to be normal again. It'd be nice to hear people talk, pe hear people on the streets again. I barely remember what that's like. It's been so long the sounds people used to make. So they're reminiscing about the last time they smiled, the future they're gonna have, and this thing's gonna have to be this way. It could be better. No more angelic harvest. No more cannibalistic demons. No more serving minds from their bodies or headless serve from stalking the ruins. And they're just talking about reminiscing what it's gonna be now that they have the heart of the heaven. And can that be anything? So they're reminiscing about that, what that'll be like. They sit quietly each attempting to process what tomorrow may look like if the legends of the hearts of the heavens are true because if they are then the power they stole from their slain enemy will expose an even greater evil so claudius goes into look i want you to know i am sorry i am sorry for not trusting you enough i called you out to the darkness because i was scared scared i was going to lose you and raptors like you look you don't have to say all that it's cool i know but i want you says claudius i need you to hear this i know you wanted to save Aaron from what happened but you're just one man but you saved me, and I've been thankful for that ever since. So whatever happens tomorrow, you're still being man. And you always have been. Just promise me that you'll. And before she can complete her sentence, her head gets decapitated off from this figure behind her. And I don't know what that is, but green eyes? Is this a spawn in the future? Or what? I, I, I'm just throwing out theories here. And he yells and screams as he sees the love of his life and their bond just get stripped away from him. Their voices provide a spawn a target to focus on. Guiding him back to the light, thrashing about blindly when he emerged from the dark, he accidentally killed the last female left on this earth. But Spawn saw her not as a hero, but as an existential threat. Now Raptor has drawn Spawn's full attention. So Spawn went into the future and killed her, but it, it, make, it still makes no damn sense. I got more questions, man. You're going to pay for messing with and that Spawn's dialogue. And then he says, my head. At full throttle, this this head and transforms into the raptor at least i'm face to face with the monster who killed our future and there's any possibility of getting it back the only way to trigger that is through your 
death. And that's where we end this issue as Raptor is pissed and him and Spawn encounter one another. Okay, I I do have some questions, but I gotta see where this issue goes. Do I think this is a cool issue? I mean, yeah, I do, but it, I gotta see how this concludes. Is the payoff worth it? And we won't know until we read Prophecy Death Part 2 in Spawn issue 307. Before we get into this issue, in Prophecy of Death Part 1, a mysterious orange energy had engulfed Spawn and set him hurling towards a horrific version of the future. A future that if Raptor is to believe is all Spawn's fault. Now the showdown is set to begin, the Hell Spawn versus the Angel Slayer. Now Earth is merely a nuisance. We get into this narration where Earth is getting in their way as Heaven and Hell wage their endless war against one another. So if centuries of their callous slaughter could so easily be dismissed, then Spawn is equally unmoved by the fact that he's just killed the only woman left alive in this new reality. And that was Raptors, Bond, Claudius or whatnot. And that was in the previous issue. She was the last one, says Raptor, as he unlaunches himself at Spawn, ready to get at the action. And the reason for Spawn's coldness is because even when his enemies think they're different or that they're somehow changed at their core, they'll always be evil, regardless of their disillusions to the contrary. Now we're all condemned, says Raptor, and Raptor continues his enraged speech. She said you'll be coming, that you'll return to the devastation that your kind created. Spawn's like, man, I'm deaf to all this. I'm numb to all this, man. I'm Spawn, baby. And instead, what Spawn decides to do is he readies himself using a portion of his limited powers that he still has. Because to justify himself to his enemies would encourage even more rambling. And with this type that Spawn is dealing with, he has always found that less is more. And Raptor's like, my powers are fused with her. And he starts developing his arms back. But I didn't want it that way. She begged me, told me to survive long enough to find those who ever destroyed our planet. And Spawn's like, yo, what are you saying, bro? Having just fallen out of the darkness, Spawn assumed he was back on Earth, which he is. But he also assumed he was back in the 21st century, which he's not even close to being back there. But somehow, Spawn was pulled through a time continuing loop. And instead of getting off at the same place he started, a ripple occurred throwing him off before his hellish ride was complete. And what's worse is that Spawn may have caused all this damage himself. And Spawn's like, yo, man, I need to get out of here. Like, he knows something's off over here. The problem is, Spawn doesn't know where to go. If he teleports back into the shadow darkness, will he just get lost again? But if he doesn't go now, he might not have the power to try again. Devil, says Raptor, why have you made me weak? And Spawn doesn't know how or why, but he knows this deranged man is somehow draining Spawn's energy too. Those two are feeding off each other's life force. If I'm gonna die, then you're coming with me, says Raptor. And Spawn is beginning to feel what little power he still has start to drain away from his body. The planet is slowly eating up both the life like everything else that's connected to it. The heartbeat of this world is ebbing its way to a distinction. And somehow, this man man and Spawn are part of this insane puzzle going through something else at play here. And there is something else at play here, but is it heaven or hell? Spawn feels it. Spawn feels it's much bigger than those two. Much bigger. But it just needed the right catalyst to trigger an awakened spirit. What the hell? So they go back into this darkness Spawn does, fights this dude. Now something else is at play that's manifesting or getting born again or whatever the case may be. Now as Spawn tries to escape into the darkness, his mind is burnt with searing memories from Raptor's past. Master, says Raptor. And those memories have, have a cryptic tale to tell. And then we see this dialogue of this cage in hell or just prison in hell and this guy's telling rap that your attempt at stealing away my throne never stood a chance you know that right i've got spies everywhere and a small army of loyal soldiers willing to die for our cause sadly i thought you might be part of that movement and remember how you used to boast to anyone who listened about your grand visions for hell you were so persuasive to so many and i admired how many you killed along the way who disagreed with you loyalty is your only currency without it they won't follow you and those who aren't built to be leaders can't understand its value that's why i've chosen you raptor before raptor was raptor as we see him kind of in human form but before he gets formed into raptor or full-on raptor that's why i've chosen you they don't know you yet so you can infiltrate the ranks kill those you deem unnecessary like you did says raptor exactly like i did god the clown none of them stood a chance and none of them finished what they started. And none of them ever wanted me free because once that happened, they knew if they couldn't control Simmons, they have no chance with me. All I need now is someone to unlock the final door for me, and that's where you come in. 
This guy tells him, I don't know who this guy is just yet, that we're going to convert this planet, make it our image, and the millions who will fight against us will blame the hell spawns for everything. It may take centuries, but when we get there, I promise I'll serve you, the carcass of the man responsible for creating me. Al Simmons, that's the man I'll serve you. He never knew what he unleashed with my death. He had no idea he had sentenced me to the end of humanity when he killed me. When he does, I'll make sure he'll scream and scream. I know that reference, and that's the reference from Spawn, issue number five, when Spawn killed Billy Kincaid for murdering all those children. Then you could take over his mantle with a new identity filled with memories that'll be so convincing, you'll think everything you've done was in the name of justice and Raptor it, eyes gets red and he gets the flame and he's ready for this action. And so, answer a simple question, says Billy Kinky. I know who this is, is right now. I don't need no big reveal at the end. Yes, yeah, says Raptor. Can you be loyal to me? And Raptor says yes. And with that single word, the attempts at intersecting the future and the past began. The problem is, that's not how nature works. It won't tolerate being forced into something that isn't natural. So when Hell's ambitious goals were thrust upon the world trying to destroy man and conquering heaven, it also woke a sleeping giant. That result will soon make its presence known to spawn. But Hell's initial plan was to tap into the emotions of Al Simmons, the one a hundred years later would be dubbed Patient Zero. They always knew the Achilles of this man was his emotions. It wasn't their physical skills or greed. Take away the thing that mattered to them most and they would be forever broken. And in Al Simmons' case, it was Wanda. It worked on Patient Zero in the beginning. And it continued to work through the countless decades until the servitude of humans turned their own actions into war so devastating that the very air became poisonous to most inhabitants. Al Simmons may have been the first target, but others blinded by their faith and loyalty followed orders that would kill their own loved ones. And by that time, anyone could comprehend that their delusion of their actions had been set. Even the villains convinced themselves they were the heroes. Pulled deep into the blackness where Spawn thrives, Raptor won't allow himself to become a captive. If he can't control Simmons' mind, then he'll make sure Simmons can't control his either. Your time will come, Hell Spawn says Raptor. The shadows will turn on you when you least expect it. Then you'll know what I'm feeling. The losses I've had to endure all this time, I'd sooner die than serve you. Raptor, you can't say Spawn, but Spawn groups his teeth. It had only been a few moments lost in the darkness for him, but for Raptor, it was years of being lost. Time had twisted itself once more. And though the shadows had blanketed Spawn a short period of time, his mind saw flashes of something lurking in the background. Someone who had waited generation upon generation to put this chosen one directly into spiritual contact with Spawn. Why? Because it only wanted one thing, and Spawn knows what that was. The beast has been freed. It didn't want Raptor as a warrior. He wanted him as a sacrifice. Frozen in that thought. Now, Spawn doesn't know, but we know it as a reader that it's Billy King K coming back in action. Frozen in that time, Spawn wills himself to find a way back home to get back to where he belongs as he passes through that maze of time, something that follows him. Something is following while he's doing that. And it'll take some time before the two come face to face. Unfortunately, when that meeting does happen with the two, unspeakable horrors will have already been committed. Screams of anguish. Parents will fill the air with howls of some injured animal. Week after week, these acts of slaughter were continued on the most innocent and that most innocent will happen of that slaughter again and again and again and it will happen with no way to slow it down or stop it and since this beast it can move so easily in and out of the shadows it could be anywhere at any time and it is invisible like a ghost on the souls of tortured bodies of so many children on that night when spawn and the beast will once again meet the monster will introduce himself again. He <laughs> says the monster. And those words will forever haunt Spawn. What's the matter, Simmons? Of course it had to be me, but not Billy. He's gone. Now there's only Kincaid. And that is the end of this issue. I mean, I love the payoff that is Billy Kincaid. I didn't think this was the best issue overall, but now that I've read future Spawn issues, I'm going back to the past to catch up on Spawn issues. This Billy Kincaid and Spawn meet in King Spawn, either issue three, four, or five, I don't recall, but I'll put the card up top of the link in the description with it and what issues they met. And that was a gangster issue when they did meet, and that was an awesome fight when a demonic Billy King Cade, after Spawn tortured him and murdered him in Spawn issue number five, now he's back for some more action. So guess what, I, loved, I just love the payout here. Did I think the issue was great? I mean, it threw me on the loop in the in Death of Prophecy of Death Part 1, but hey, I mean, I thought it was cool. I thought it was okay.
In the Prophecy of Death Part 2 in the previous issue, the battle between Spawn and Raptor rages on, neither one able to gain the upper hand. The stalemate begins to lead down the path towards their mutual destruction. As the conflict enters the realm of darkness, Spawn and Raptor's minds become one. It is there that Spawn learns the terrible truth. The beast has to, has been set free, and that is Billy King K. Or actually, just King K from the previous issue. So we begin this issue with this Ra's al Ghul looking dude. I mean, Spawn version, right? That the ultimate victory is far from assured. And their impending victory has been radically increased with the clown out of the picture and their coalition now in charge. So he's definitely one of Hell's agents. And he knows that Heaven's agents will resist joining them. But soon they'll see the light because soon they won't have an option. And the same will become true for, for Spawn. Or those at least loyal to Spawn. So they're on the precipice of taking over and conquering. And guess what? He is pissed. The humans have had their freedom for far too long. We may look like them, act like them, but never forget your heritage or your superiority. Those of you in this room have it. That's why I invited you. Me and the minds, we're gonna take over this globe, run this stuff, run this world, but at the same time, we need to play, we all need to play our parts. We can't get over cocky here. We gotta, you know, kind of stay low and be cool for right now, but we're gonna strike when the time is right. And also they can't give any media outlet a hint of their existence. Spawn has them all crawling all over themselves, chasing down conspiracies. We don't need all of that. And we don't want them getting too close to the truth. So deflect, distract, and deny everything. I keep wanting to call Raz al Ghul, but I don't know what his name is yet. And he keeps telling us that the irony of it all is Spawn himself has given them all the opportunity. You've all heard what happened at the Clown's Albany installation. And what you may not know, it's also created a wrinkle in time. And that's referencing issues of Spawn 300 and 301, which I did do reviews on. I'll put the link in the description in the card on top as well. And that wrinkle is a temporal portal in time. Al Simmons is no longer alone. Other Spawns have arrived, but they were all bored in hell too which means they all won't be enemies. And if we could persuade most of them to join our side, then Mr. Simmons may have just delivered us the very weapons that will destroy him. Keep going. It's a long exposition, but you know, it's a lot of buildup of world building. So what he talks about is his field agents have told him that there's a new rogue agent, a new rogue spawn, the one Mount Boja called Medieval Spawn. And he nearly succeeded in defeating Al Simmons, but he didn't. That doesn't matter. What does matter is spawns are trained to fight and take over and slaughter anything in their path. But spawns never murder another spawn until recently where Al Simmons decapitated the head of Medieval Spawn. And the reason why that happens is because Medieval if Spawn didn't do that, then Medieval Spawn was gonna kill Al. And spawns never break that code. It's the one single rule that binds all spawns together. Kill anything, but never your own. Two days ago, that rule was shot. Al Simmons decapitated Medieval Spawn. Because Razo goes like, yo, if that didn't happen, then the a reverse is gonna happen. And guess what? That just changes everything. And this brother from off screen or off panel tells him, I already set that emotion, Bannister. Cause he's thinking they can exploit them by making sure none of them trust each other ever again. F their rule, if this is a new game, I'm gonna use that to my advantage. And this Raz al Ghul looking guy, actually his name is Bash like Cog. Sorry for the later rivals says Cog. Well, you weren't invited and we don't want you here. And Cog's like, yo, your guards told me the same thing and look how that happened. But I'm gonna tell you one thing, because the new hell spawns, they won't act or think the way they have all in the past. Some will be looking for blank slates, looking to attach themselves to the closest host. And if they do that, the randomness of joining those human hosts will create the opportunity you spoke about, says Cock. But Cock continues, but I promise you one thing, none of you will get within 100 feet of them without me masking your stench. You guys stink. Well, <laughs> It's just Cog trying to present himself to, hey, I got some value here. But meanwhile, in an unknown location, Spawn, Mark, She, Spawn, and Reaper are looking at Medieval Spawn. And they're trying to figure out what was in there, what could have poured it, what was inside and what could have poured from before Spawn decapitated his head because they're expecting a body. And Mark's like, well, at least that's one less reading on my map than advantage. So it's possible, I guess, but there's definitely one less blip. I don't know how to explain that. Maybe it's gone hiding and Spawn's like, no, it's not gone. It's hiding. If they can cloak themselves with their symbiote, that's a problem. Problem. And I don't know how many of them exist. And she spawns like, well, you met one of them in the darkness in the previous issue, right? And spawns like, that wasn't a spawn. It was an amalgamation of things. But his actions were too erratic, almost to the point of de delusion. So 
how do you know these things are all coming to kill us? And Spawn's like, we don't. And she spawns like, well, that just that's just sound, that's just fan fucking tastic, isn't it? So Reaper's like, let's take the offense. Seriously, says Spawn, yeah. And Mark's like, no, 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 no. You guys need to recharge your batteries because the rings I'm getting from you is anywhere close to what the others are indicating. They're stronger than you. You're weaker. Get some charge. And Spawn's like, you're wrong. I ain't got time for that. I gotta arm up. Doing nothing is what'll get us all killed. When the enemy advances, you confront them. Every second you hesitate, you're giving them more ground. You think heaven and hell are going to wait, says Spawn, that they're going to analyze this to death? No. They're going to try getting to as many of them as they can. Those they deem worthwhile, they'll lie to them to join the star. And the others are just killed. So we got to make a move, you know? And their conversation goes on at length. Then Mark gives them the coordinates of a reading halfway across the globe. It's agreed that she, Spawn, and the Reaper would do their own assessment. One-on-one -on, -one on the weaker readings, their first goal is to even see what they're dealing with. Their second goal is to see whatever they're about to meet, if it's friend or a foe. For Jessica, she's been chomping at the bit for this chance. She's known for some time that if they don't soon get Al Simmons some reinforcements, his blind focus will lead them all into oblivion. So whether he likes it or not, she's going to find something or someone he's going to have to eventually trust. So meanwhile, at a dive bar outside of the landmark New Mexico town, the temperature is 97 degrees. Who gives them? Who cares what temperature it is? That's how the Palm is right now. But this brother named Javier that's gunsling is is quenching his thirst with whiskey okay i guess you gotta establish the temperature degrees outside while he's crunching his thirst with some whiskey and i do like me a good whiskey from time to time but anyways back to the review he's debating whether he should dis disappear into the locals around him because he's in a hostile environment and why is he in a hostile environment he's at a dive bar he's a hell spawn and also he murdered nine bodies in that bar so meanwhile the officers the cops outside in the bullhorn is like Javier, we're not here and they got to come out he flips them off inside the bar not like they can see him come out with your hands up you're completely surrounded around it says the officer but gunslinger or javier finishes his drink he's not in much of a mood to listen to any orders all he came there for was to quench his thirst but there were a few inside that weren't skilled enough at holding their own liquor you know so they go back in the past and javier gets into a bar fight puts him on the ground puts him on their asses tells him look i didn't start this fight but i'm sure as hell gonna finish it and though he doesn't quite understand how some of the gadgets and guns work in this new world, he knows there's not much difference of how good old hand-to-hand -hand bar brawl works. His only disappointment is that we're the only nine of them. He wanted more fight. What's better than fight? Mo fight, please, says Gunslinger Spawn. And he's not Gunslinger Spawn just yet, but this is Gunslinger Spawn in Javier form. When the police arrive, eventually he did step outside like they asked, but only for a few minutes before returning for another drink. Proud of yourself, aren't you, says his voice off panel. I thought I smelled something. It's the Hellhounds, but he's staying outside. Hmm, that's smart. And Cog's like, can I join you for a drink? Depends. Depends on what? On why you're here in the first place. And Cog's like, I just want to talk some sense into you. Can we talk? And Gunslinger put blasted with the Necro Bullet and unfazed Cog's like, you done? Hmm. So it's true, old man, says Javier. Cog still has a bit of spawn left in him. And Javier continues his speech. He's like, I hear you've been making your fair share of enemies lately. I'm here to talk to you about you. Now sit down, says Cog. Let's get into this conversation. And Cog wants Javier to join him on this fight. But before Javier makes a decision, he's like, well, I got to ask you, man. How did I get here? Another spawn opened a hole and you fell into it. Meaning a time portal, a wrinkle in time. And Javier's like, okay, I figure it was something like that. Because how did I go from 1800s to here? To now. So Cog's like, my turn. How much power do you have left? And he's like, man, it doesn't matter, says Javier. Just go on. Let me have my drink. It does matter. It always matters, says Cog. You think you can just grab any host body you want? Humans are built for all that. So he goes and tells him into the story that the one you've got now will shrivel and die out in the next 24 hours. I was in that town. You landed in back there. They never had a chance did they? You poisoned them. You know that, right? That's not normal. And whatever brought you here, you've been tainted. And if you don't do something about it soon, you're going to shrivel away too. And Chavier's like, and why should I believe you? And Cog tells him, I hope you don't. Stay cocky. It means I'll have one less spawn to compete with because you're a dead man if you go at it alone. Your choice. So Gunslinger Spawn concedes and decides, hey, okay, he's starting to feel his body weakening Cog and he agreed that he needs to go back into town as long as a way of testing what went wrong, hoping to discover a way to stop his condition. And Cog tells him they'll be watching you, all of them. And he's like, aren't they always? And Cog's like, yo, this is different. Every agent of heaven and hell has been locked here on Earth and they're not keen on the thought of another spawn ready and this hellhound looks at javier and javier is like okay i'm ready but i only ask of one thing keep this thing away from me i have a bad history with their kind and cog's like okay good luck so why do you care so much about all this anyway i thought you were a loner says javier to cog and cog's like well 
I have my reasons. I got my reasons. But the way he says it is very sussy. And we soon later know in later issues of Spawn, even though it took about a year or two to, to, to you know, materialize, why Cog cares. And now, so we end this issue of Spawn issue number 308, the consequences in issue number one. Obviously a filler issue, built world building, building up the story. And like I said, four play is four play before you get it, before you get it in there, if you get my drip. But I dug it. I mean, I'm a Spawn fan. I like Spawn and I'm learning more about Spawn as we as we read into these other issues, these back issues, and doing reviews on them. But hey, man, I thought it was good. What you guys think of the comic? Comment below. Let me know. And also, if you'd like to add this comic book to your comic book collection, link in description. In the consequences in part one, with the future in doubt and medieval Spawn's legacy in question, Spawn, She Spawn, and Reaper go on the offensive. But a longtime ally has shown his true colors. And Carlos Yosha rallies an army and a daily new recruit, Gunslinger Spawn. So we see Gunslinger Spawn having been ripped from some kind of time continuum was trying to adjust to this modern world he found himself in. So he quickly found a host body to use so he could blend in. Then he went to go find himself a drink and give himself a chance to collect his thoughts. And that's where the previous issue was left off and where we are now. It didn't go as planned. Instead, he now feels his body slowly draining his energy source like some hellish cancer has been released in him. And if he doesn't find a cure or replacement for that energy, he'll meet the same fate as everyone else from this place. And this spawn can't survive, it won't matter how he got there or why Callisto is helping him. He'll search for those answers later. He doubts he has more than 12 hours left with this new body that he's in. And for now, he has to find another host body to jump into as he's walking and striving through this town. And he hears some kind of sound. That some kind of sound. It's great. And he clicks his gun, looks around. He's like, uh, okay, I know I'm about to get some action. So, so he goes into this door, says hello. Nothing happens. So what is Gunslinger Spawn supposed to do? Well, I'll let the brother light up a cigarette, calm some nerves because there's some action about to go down. But nothing's alive as of yet. And then 20 seconds pass, and then he hears the sound again. Grrr, like a growl. And the rabbit animal is delivered in a threatening tone. And he barks at him. And then Gunslinger Spawn clicks his gun back, ready to blast off on him. Then suddenly, it silences itself. It's afraid of something it sees. Something behind the Gunslinger Spawn. So Gunslinger Spawn turns around and shoots off. And as the bullets fly past Colleagues to Yosho, he almost basks in the slight breeze they caused. Knowing that these hellhounds at his side were going to draw out the Gunslinger Spawn's natural instincts, he brought them out all along for a test. Cog thought they'll last a little longer with this test, but given the game they're all playing here, collateral damage is often result. And Gunslinger's like, yo, I thought you were staying behind. Well, Cog says, I changed my mind. So I wonder where this is going to pick up off. But elsewhere, Spawn and Mark are looking at medieval Spawn's pieces from the previous couple issues. And Spawn's like, there has to be a correlation as to why this Spawn tried to kill me and the readings you're getting out there. Our costumes have enough intelligence to know when they're facing a threat. His actions are that of an opposite, like they've been rewired or something. And Mark is trying to tell Spawn something like, hey, I keep saying the data from these other entities isn't fitting into any kind of pattern. It's like they're trying to find a path to follow. And Spawn's like, hmm, maybe it has something to do with the material they're made of. And Mark's like, I don't think it has much to do with it. I'm talking about psychological logical tendencies and impulses. Those aren't driven by external interactions. They're pre-built into our DNA at birth. These new spawns or whatever they are, they're trying to find their new metal footing. Like one, I think Mark is trying to tell Spawn, you're missing the point here. And two, what Spawn is trying to say is, spawns don't kill spawns. That's what we're destined to do. But medieval spawn was trying to kill me and I was trying to kill him. So what the hell is going on here? And Mark tells him, and a little nudge either way could dramatically change the direction they're going to. And the spawn is getting mad. Like, what the hell are you telling me, Mark? Like, I'm trying to find something here and you keep giving me these empty answers, trying to point me in another direction. You're missing the point. And so Spawn is like, and you want to discount our living costumes? And Mark's like, no, 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 no. I want to find the humanity behind who they are before I worry about the other parts. That could help in understanding why in which any of them are acting erratic. Think about it, says Mark. The time twist you went through. They're disoriented. Shouldn't that surprise you? And Spawn's like, hmm. So they're clearly like having this back and forth. Spawn is trying to find out a point. Mark is trying to give him another direction to go into. So this frustrates Spawn. He's like, here, since you're so damn smart, figure it out. I'm done arguing with you. And Mark's like, that's what I've been doing. You're just not paying attention. I'm done arguing with you too, Spawn. Why do you think I've got all this work on my desk? You think this is fun spending every hour attempting to solve the puzzle you created? Read these. 
all of them, maybe you'll realize the reason I don't give a shit no more about the armor over there is because you've got way bigger problems than that. So take this piece of paper. So wake up. Spawn's like, hmm. He snatches it, looks at it. His symbiote forms around his face. He's like, I'll look at it all right. But next time you might want to find a better way to get your freaking point across. So meanwhile, Tokyo, Japan, she Spawn and Reaper, they enter the scene by a form of necroplasm transportation. And Reaper's like, you said someone will be here waiting for us. And this is going back to the previous issue where they have to go on the offensive to see what's going on with all these readings that they're showing up on the map. And then she Spawn's like, someone must have tipped them off. And she Spawn doesn't like the fact that the person who was there gave no indication that any of their plans have changed. Reaper's like, have we been compromised? And she's like, no, if we had been compromised, we would have been ambushed right now. Hopefully, whoever sent this here left the package, he promised me. What's in the package, says Reaper, names and locations of targets that have been financing covert missions that a friend of mine died trying to undercover. And what she's talking about is Nyx. And keep in mind, Nyx is the reason why Jessica Priest is now she spawned. In minutes, she rifles through as many cabinets as she can. Shit, she says, nothing here. So Reaper's like, what now? She picks up a chair and throws it out the window and she sets off the alarm. And she's like, if we can't find them, then maybe I'll just make them find us by way of this alarm. So Gunslinger points a gun at Cog and he tells Cog, you've got a quite a legacy over the centuries, Cog. Is it true? You're the long as living spawn or did you create that myth too and Kai's like we've all done what we need to do none of us is as loyal as we like to be even you so I have an offer you want to live you'll need my help but then you're on my side and what side is that says gunslinger which everyone allows us to survive says Cog. but before you make your decision I like you to introduce you to someone and Gunslinger Spawn is momentarily shocked from the shadows comes a pristine looking Javier Sanchez. The same person he thought he was currently possessing. And Gunslinger's like, this has to be some kind of trick. Another one of your hellhounds shape-shifting. No, says Cogs, he's the original, which begs the question, who are you really possessing? Don't be so naive. You're not so good to me if you're so that stupid. Gunslinger Spawn's like, yo, man, you set me up. You set me up. They said you couldn't be trusted. Your lust for power is what caused your downfall. Funny, says Cogs. I've outlasted most of my enemies. Javier, test him. And before anything, Javier flinches and Gunslinger Spawn shoots instinctively though he knows bullets won't have an effect on any allies of Cogs. He does not want has an effect on, but he still shoots the bullet anyway. And Cogs like, you're right, I did set him up. After he shoots the bullet through his forehead, now this plague, this tar, this symbiote envelops him. And Cogs tells him, the body you took over, I constructed it, making it so you'd be attracted to it. You didn't choose that body by accident. I led you to it, and you fell right into that trap. But it's time to make a choice, says Cogs. Show me you're worth trying to recruit that even with the poison cursing through you that I didn't make a mistake, that I haven't underestimated you, that maybe I'll let you join my cause. Gunslinger Spawn sizes up his opponent. It appears to be some hybrid creature, part demon, part symbiote. It's a combo this Spawn isn't thrilled to engage with, especially with its weakened state, but they go at it, they fight, he shoots, he attacks, the plague spawn, or what I kind of call it a plague spawn, but it's not plague spawn. And he ducks and dodges, and they're going at it. And his best hope, Gunslinger Spawn's best hope, is to try and slow it down. Then try finding its vulnerable spot, its Achilles heel. Exploit that, and he'll end this battle on his terms in a fashion he wants. If he can't, Spawn's time in this modern world will be shorter than he anticipated. And But there's something from inside this creature as their battle rages back and forth. Gunslinger Spawn begins to feel something inside this creature. Something that must have been put there by Cogs himself. Before he can decipher what that is, well, he gets impelled, he gets shanked, and he gets in a compromised position. And this Spawn right here is like, how does it feel to receive the pain instead of giving it? I wait a long time to devour one like you. No, says Gunslinger. The creatures cause bury themselves deeper into Gunslinger Spawn's chest as Black Tar begins to pour into him. It takes 10 seconds or so for the transformation to complete. And he's fully complete now. Gunslinger Spawn is his new Tar Spawn or whatever the Spawn is. But whatever it is, it is an ally of Cogs, as so it seems. Excellent, my loyal pet. Soon. Our next phase begins since Cogs. This guy and this guy is like, uh-uh, the game has changed. Sorry to break the news to you, Cog. Your pet didn't quite make it. I let him gut me, let him ooze into me because I needed his power and he gave it to me in space. Cause I set him up just like you did to me. Well, congratulations, says Cogs. I hope you figure that out. By passing your test, 
You've shown that you're ready. Okay, yeah, you know I'm ready. I'm ready to be left alone. And he decapitates Cogs' head, slits his head off, and all this necoplasm blood bleeds out. In the weeks to come, Gunslinger, filled with the renewed power, will show our world the true impact of his presence, especially with what he's about to do next. And that's where we end this issue. Obviously, the consequences sent issue number two of Spawn, issue number 309. More story building to build the Spawn's universe into this vast story that we're going to see come into fruition later. I'm going back from 298 all the way up to current issues of Spawn just to kind of catch myself up with Spawn. And keep in mind, when I first started reading Spawn, I started at issue 314 and then again at 317 and went on from there. But I thought this was gangster. I love the story building that it's setting up and I can't wait to see how this story all pieces itself together before we go into the review i just want to let you guys know that this story this issue takes place after the consequence of sin storyline i'll put the card up top in the link in the description if you want to check that out but to sum it up the mysterious and dangerous army of spawns continue to grow first she spawned and reaper then medieval spawn now gunslinger spawn has made his presence known but who is a hero and who is a villain that's the question we need to ask ourselves now we begin this issue with this panel with recent outbreaks of an unknown virus the scientist community has been working feverishly for the past year research labs on a global scale have been hunting for elusive binary combination that will deliver a potential vaccine now prestige and enormous amounts of funding will flow to the lab that can deliver a safe and effective serum now this scientist this lady is looking like like yes this is amazing you know we've really come across you know a serum here a vaccine now the latest results i'll get my the calculations into my presentations this evening going in front of those who value profits over patients is never comfortable she's about to do a presentation over the board but you know they fund this project and without him this experiment wouldn't have been possible so back in her office the doctor spends three more hours making her final adjustments it has to be flawless she hits save before closing so she goes into this meeting and tells them that with proper sequencing and verifiable data and government support we believe our formula is ready for public use and they're like great this is excellent now are you confident there won't be any surprise and she's like yes I even stake my entire reputation on it and they tell them very well we'll report your findings to the board tomorrow please give our heartfelt gratitude to your entire staff now though her daily commute is nearly two hours each way dr mila visor seems to take extra pleasure on her drive home this evening before leaving her car she allows herself one last smile she goes into her house gives her hubby a kiss and tells her hubby that the presentation went perfectly the kids wake up she tells the kids what do you guys are still doing it's time for you to go back to bed but before going to bed herself she makes one last check and you can tell with her raccoon eyes she tells herself she looks like shit and her hubby tells her well look you had a big day you came across a breakthrough you know get some rest i'll get up in the morning with the kids you should sleep in she's like i can't so I, my mind is just running all over the place you mind if i you know read a book or something so she does that but as she reads her book she's so engrossed with her own thoughts dr Vizen fails to notice that the faint sound of crickets outside of her window has stopped or that the wind has gone eerily silent and the temperature in her room has suddenly dropped by the time she does notice that it's too late spawn has entered the room what's keeping you awake tonight doctor your conscience and you know you can tell like his voice is sound like like fingernails on chalk just scraping eerily and devilish and spawn tells her they were right and i'll be coming for them too once i'm done here now the cold room wakes up the last occupant which is her husband now she's eerily way too calm that spawn is in her room and she just looks at spawn like hmm they said you might come one day and his chains gives her hubby a crack on the side and he tells her don't worry he'll live so you know and spawn's like yeah i do know so she tells spawn there's 300 of us you know that right and that's your excuse says spawn that others are doing it so you got to do it too i get it why it's in your nature what angers me though is your constant recruiting of others to do your dirty work how many of your assistants were helping you four five and she tells him seven hmm seven says spawn that's really impressive 
They knew that changing your data and fixing your results would create an even more potent disease, not cure one. You want these medicines to get out, not to help people, but to taint them, in some cases even kill them. She agrees without saying explicitly that she disagrees by telling Spawn you can't stop that. And Spawn's like, okay, I'm sure you heard what happened to your Albanian facility. That was me. And that was back in issues 300 and 301, which we did do a review on. I'll put the link in the description as well. And the card on top for Spawn issue 300. Now Spawn ask her what about your boss and she says my boss was never the clown and spawns like good because i killed him so what are you gonna do now are you gonna shoot me is that your plan and spawns like yeah i'm gonna shoot you and she's like you know that doesn't work and spawns like it doesn't matter i made modifications so yes i am gonna shoot you but the gunshot wakes her husband up and he screams in panic like the love of my life just got shot in the head by a hell spawn i mean just another day in the office right so spawn tells him shut your mouth that thing you're lying there She's not your wife, she's a demon tr demon trying to live like a human so she can infiltrate the minds of others. They paid her well. How do you think you guys were able to afford all this stuff? All I want to know is now where she keeps your secrets. And he's like, I don't know. Listen to me, says Spawn. Don't give me that I don't know crap. You've got two half-breed kids in here. I'd rather not kill them. Not tonight, at least. Now, where does she hide her files? Now, they shared many secrets with one another, but one of them was not that she was a demon. But the secrets they did share, she did tell him that where she kept the secret files at. But you know what, Spawn, he doesn't give a damn about any of that. People are dying because the actions of these monsters seem to be growing. They're getting more confident that nothing can oppose them on a holistic level. Sure, Spawn will be slight deterrent to their overall momentum, but not in any meaningful way, not in any way that would make them think for even a second to ratchet back their plans. And Spawn unfortunately knows that they are right. He can't stop them by himself. Not all of them. He can take them out one by one, but how long would that take? And it'll give the agents of heaven and hell too much time to corrupt and recruit more humans to their cause. Because there's only one true deadly sin, not seven. That's greed. Every day, each of us flawed humans is susceptible to it. Spawn knows he will never be able to change that. And that is just too insurmountable to fight against. Now, restless, Al Simmons returns back to his dark, hidden sanctuary, but a distant hum and echoing down the hallway tells him otherwise. He cracks open the door and, <laughs> you know, let's just say it's his birthday with birthday cake looking at him, blow drying her hair. But he lingers. He knows it's not respectful, but he lingers a little bit longer than he should. Hello, Al, says Jessica. And he just looks at her like, mm, you know, were you looking for something, says Jessica? No. Are you sure, she says. And he's like, I'm sure. Well, if you change your mind, let me know. And Al was just, I'm pretty sure Al, for a second, had to have thought about, well, you know what, maybe, maybe. You know, like that brother behind the tree right there. But at the same time, I guess I have to give him credit because there's so much going on in this war that there's this isn't a vacation, this isn't a war. The moment you lose focus, he'll get buried. And she's like, are you serious? Because I don't want to be a cold-hearted bastard like you, says Jessica. And you think I'm somehow less prepared for all this? And he tells her, you're predictable. That's going to get someone killed. And what do you care? You don't have anyone close anymore, so stop with your concern. They're out there, Jessica says Al, waiting for us to slip up. But if you don't have the guts for this war, you're no good to me. Get dressed. You need to see something. And she's like, really? You, you think I don't have the guts for all this when you saw what happened to me in Japan? So meanwhile, they go into this and they go into Spawn's computer lair and he tells her, how many dots do you count? on the heat map, 6,000, there's over 6,000. And you know what each one indicates? It says that a soldier from heaven or hell is 6,000 of them. They're there, spread across the world to create chaos everywhere. And they don't care how they deliver that chaos. Through war, political unrest, disease, it's all the same to them. Get humans to claw each other's throats or be afraid of each other, that's their goal. That's why there's so many of them and that's why this war is getting out of hand. I need you on your focus here, says Spawn. And Jessica's like, that's why I'm here, Al, to help. You're not the only one that suffered a loss. She suffered a loss, too, as she's referring to Nix. So Mark comes in. He's like, what's going on? Just go back to bed, Mark. You know, just a quick panel here. But as Mark exits the room, Al begins to transform. And so she asks him, what are you doing? And Al tells her something I should have done sooner. Her heart skips a beat as he leans closer in. Then Al goes back. And they turn, they teleport to a place where that Jessica's all too familiar with. It takes place in Spawn issue number 300, which we will put the card up top there again. And 
it scares Jessica in a little bit because she's bringing brought back to a place that Nyx was dead where she discovered Nyx's dead body and so Spawn tells her this land used to belong to native people centuries ago before they got wiped out then they built a sweatshop that literally worked their employees to death later and union strike caused even more to die this place is cursed to the ground the bricks everything and this is a callback to what he did in spawn issue 301 when he puts like his own takes a symbiote back he is a symbiote he is spawn makeup spikes skulls but all those native americans all of them are going to join my army because if they want some unholy war if they think they're going to outnumber us they're wrong dead wrong rise show them all the horrors they created those native people and they rise and jessica priest is like al stop this is crazy and al can't stop hell's been abusing and torturing us since the dawn of man with heaven at their side so i'll stop when they stop and that'll never happen and spawn al continues to tell jessica you were in the military you know how enemies act First, they try domination. Then those they're unable to control, they destroy. And the lucky few of us they can't kill, they'll find what matters to us most. And they attack it, hoping to break our resolve. So Jessica Priest is like, wow, I just can't believe he control the dead now. He tells her, yeah, for a short period of time, I control the dead. But he only holds sway over them for a 200 foot radius. Behind them, from the shadows, one of the creatures shuffles slowly forward, gasping as it struggles to get enough oxygen to fill its damaged lungs. And that is next. And Jessica Priest can't believe it. And she, like, in this moment of guilt, tells her, I'm so sorry, I should have been there. And Jessica Priest, I mean, Nyx hisses at her and like a savagely corpse lunges at her to attack her like a shark in blood infested waters. Stop, says Al. Stop, says Spawn. And she retreats back. She falls back. And it's time to go. Before they do, Spawn asks Jessica one last question. I need to know, Jessica, do you still have the stomach for this? Because it's only going to get uglier. Now, another word that night is spoken between the two of them. Spawn returns Jessica back to his compound where she quickly dashed to her room. And as he leaves to find his own solace, he can't stop thinking how he's just tainted another soul because of his war. One that from this day forward will never be the same again. And that's where we end this issue. The next issue is Spawn, issue number 311 the cult of omega which i'm looking forward to get into now this is just kind of like a filler issue just kind of to tease you hey we're just going to prep this like a meal prep before we start cooking with the spawn issues now now that the prep is in you know what's about to go down and guess what i am looking for what's about to go down let's get down with the get down spawn comic so i'm looking forward to it but with all that being said link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry Previously, Spawn is on the hunt for someone, or something insidious, demons hiding amongst humans, secret dealings with Big Pharma, dark plans are about to be exposed, there is a storm coming, and Spawn is at its center. So in Burza, Northwest Turkey, a regional unrest has been gripped this nation as a growing strain of disease is seemingly being underplayed by the local government, even as the total reported cases continues to grow. Reporters are at unrest, people at unrest, and this reporter goes up to this Mayor Untambi and tells him, hey man, I gotta ask you a few questions. The, even though the guards try to stop him and shield him, he's like, man, I'm just doing my job. Get your hands off of me. And he tells Mayor Utambi, we obtained bank records that show you profited in the past decade from these companies, along with nearly a dozen of your extended family. Do you have a comment? And this mayor is like, okay, well, look, I cherish privacy and nothing else is more valuable than one solitude. We're doing everything we can. Just a typical political answer within our powers to mitigate all this. Tell your paper and tell everyone I wish for con for their continued health. And the reporter is like, oh, yeah, what about all the thousands of dead people, all the unrest? He just rolls up his window it's like we got to dip out we got to go so mary you tell me does this guy this confidant or whoever he is in the car tells him you said this wasn't going to go public it wasn't supposed to well someone leaked it and we're gonna have to look into it now <laughs> says the mayor a little too late for that gavin the reporter that asked all the questions was like man they're running away like cowards and his camera guys like they can't deflect forever but calling out their bluff on the bank accounts that was a hell of a bluff man i know but they can't deflect forever so we gotta piece those bank records together so it wasn't even all true reporters can do that sometimes just try to gaslight you or, or try to set you up for a trap or something so they drive back to their hotel gavin goes upstairs or goes to his room to take a shower as he he closes his door behind him to take that shower he gets decked in his head and shot in his head and that's the end of his life so meanwhile hundreds of miles away 
As night falls, the creatures who thrive in darkness emerge. It's their time to play, to morph, to transform, a bond together into a power in which the whole is much, much stronger than its parts. I believe this guy's name is Rebirth. He was introduced later in Spawn issue 323. I'll put the card up top and link in description if you guys want to check that out. But we're in Spawn issue 311. So if you just checked out this channel for the first time, hey, you know, I'll put the playlist at the end of the video and you can take your pick because I'm trying to cover all Spawn content from 296 all the way up to its current issues not to mention we cover gunslinger scorched and king spawn issues as well so his butler knocks on the door rebirth goes up he's just tidying up he t he's informed that the guests are waiting for him downstairs and what this party is all about even though he's a charming fellow you know working the ladies and working the room it's all about the good fortune and that his company has something to share with the people there. They all been informed that his big pharma division is on the verge of some breakthrough research. That's why they're asked to be there. Everyone's made their donations. Some people have made more donations or exceeded the donation or the minimum donation or whatnot. 3,600 miles to the southwest in Calcutta, India, there are some creatures of all sorts out tonight. This one in particular has been hunting, not an enemy like most days, but someone who shouldn't even be walking, let alone live. Now the thing is, what if what Spawn suspects is true? Then the rip in time he caused that somehow vaulted all undetermined number of other hell spawns forward to the present day may also be the reason why Spawn is missing a few of his undead warriors. Ah, that makes sense. And that's referencing issue 301, which you can check out the link in the description. We did do a review on that one. We did cover that issue. The thing is, their loyalty should have been embedded into them when he awoke them from their deaths. Yet somehow, they are hearing the call of another master. Spawn isn't willing to tolerate that. And after his recent battle with the medieval Spawn, he has no idea if he can trust his own instincts anymore. For a soldier like Al Simmons, doubting his own abilities is something your enemies seek out so they can eliminate. So instead of waiting for them to show, he'll hunt them down instead. Later, Jim Downey shows up. Hello, Al. Sit down, Jim, says Al. Well, I guess it's nice to finally meet you, so where are they, says Al. Huh, and you're just gonna come in here while to make demands, says Jim Downing? That's not smart. You wouldn't want to do that. Not when we both could be of use to each other. I mean, you don't want me as your enemy. So Spawn's like, I want them back. Your team? That's not how it's gonna work, dude. Jim continues with this dialogue. We all want the same thing. Screw heaven and hell. I'm with you on that. But this new war that you've started? You don't get to run the show. You're not alone anymore. You understand that, right? There's more of us now. Huh, says Al, and the mighty Jim Downing now has all the answers. <laughs> Not all of them, says Jim. But here's what I do know. You swat a hoarded's nest a couple times. First, you trap them here on Earth by shutting down the, you know, the dead zones. And now they're pissed off. Instead of heaven and hell beating at each other's throats, they're banding together. Because if they can't get back home, then they'll burn Earth to the ground instead. And Al's like, yo, man, I know what I'm doing. Yeah? Then why are you here? Why aren't you chasing down the bad guys? Because they're trying to find out who the bad guys are, says Al. Like you said, everyone's picking a side. As much as I like to accept that, one like you should know at what side you're on. I still have to ask, says Al. I don't know exactly when you came out of your coma, but if your powers are anywhere close to mine, you know that you're a target. And we see this flashback of these demons or angels or demons angels <laughs> running rampant, taking out a hell spawn. And Spawn tells him, the reason why I want them back is to protect you. Look at what they did in Turkey last week. If they tore through a half a dozen villages looking for something, I had a Spawn reading on my computer over there. Now it's gone, which means you're not ready for them to find you. At least not yet. So Jim and Al take a walk. And Al tells him, moving around is probably the only thing that saved you so far. And Jim Downey's like, yo, man, you tested my ego, man. I had a couple runners with them already, and I did okay. And Spawn's like, are you listening? Those are scouts. You get that? Not warriors or hunters. They're nothing on a scale of 100. They're two. So if it took you more than five seconds to obliterate them, you're more fucked than I thought. How long did it take you? It doesn't matter, says Jim Downey, because he knows it took him about five seconds, if not longer than that. Of course it matters, says Al. Everything matters. And Jim Downey, he doesn't like his ego being tested like that. You better cool off. I'm losing my patience. Good. That makes it two of us. And as they get ready to go down or throw down with the get down, well, you know, the quick heartbeat passes and they contemplate attacking each other before wisely deciding to back down. Jim Downing decides to back down wisely. And Al's like, look, man, I just want to see them. So they transport each other out of there. And moments later, they reform into a shadows of some hidden dungeon. Downing leads, Spawn follows. And where Spawn is followed to by Jim Downing is 
this chamber where Overkill and Sargor are in a tank. In other words, Jim Downey tells him, look, you gave them life by giving air in their lungs, but you made their bodies move. But what about their brains? It's rotted, so I'm resuscitating them or regenerating them. And he's saying as best as I can, I infused them. Jim Downing infused them with his own blood, but it'll be a long process, probably six to eight months. And Spawn's like, okay, where's the freak? Out running some missions. He's the furthest developer of the three. So does this meet your approval, Spawn? Am I worthy of jumping on board with you? And Spawn just looks like, no, man, you idiot. And he clobbers him. Get back. You used your own blood? Malboja and Clown poisoned it when you were in your coma. You've got tracers inside of you. Now you've passed them on. I need them to be clean. You've made them into hybrids. And Jim Downing's like, I was saving them. Downing unleashes his own pent up anger. But the energy Downing displays catches Spawn by surprise. He needs to assert his dominance because you know Alpha gotta do what Alpha gotta do. And as much as he doesn't want to waste unnecessary power given his weakened state, Spawn knows he needs to be the Alpha dog oh, right now. And he walks up to him and stops those beans right away. I made you hoping you'd be someone special, someone the world could count on. If you're not going to do that, if you're not going to fight for that, then I'll take you out right now, says Spawn. You need to get way stronger or you'll be useless to me. And this is referencing back in Spawn issue 185, which I obviously haven't covered. And, you know, I just jumped into Spawn at issues 317 up. And now I'm going back from 296 moving forward. And, dude, this is awesome. That's all I got to say. Now get them out of that machinery, says Spawn. Go to hell, I don't answer to you. Fine, says Spawn. So he punches that machinery, he punches the glass himself, and after a few blows, it crashes and breaks open. Overkill is on the floor, he gets up, master. Jib down, he's like, yo man, he can't survive out of his chamber, I have to put his tubes back in. Overkill, get your tubes, that's his command. Don't worry, says Al, he'll survive. This one was built to endure anything. Overkill stands up, ready to do his thing. I'm more concerned about Psychor and Freak. They're coming, like you told us, Master. The bad ones are coming. They are, but we'll be ready, says Spawn. And we go into this other panel in North Dakota. There were some good folks in this good part in the good decade that always had a smile on their face and a kind word to say. But we see these dead folks, husband and wife, we can assume, and this cock. <laughs> Man, put some flowers, some chicken, some barbecue sauce. I'm ready to eat that. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Chicken. Chicken. I'm not going to say the other C word. Hot sauce sounds good, too. Anyways, back to the content. They never caused any trouble with the couple that's on the bench. At least none the locals knew about it. And I said the bench are actually on a rocking chair. And bugs are flying around. But he didn't have a choice. He had to kill them. And it was easy for him to do even when the elder lady screamed for mercy. See, they actually weren't human. They've been pretending all those years as they were biding their time, preparing, waiting for their great war to begin. And we see Gunslinger spawn. And unfortunately for them, Gunslinger spawn has been making preparations of his own. They just happen to get in his way. And that's where we end this issue of spawn, issue number 311, The Cult of Omega. To me, I think this is an engaging read that would keep you and the readers on the edge of your seat. It definitely kept me on the edge of my seat, and I was obviously intrigued by it. I love Spawn. I love the Spawn issues. I'm excited to see where the events of this issue takes our heroes or anti-heroes next. So what do you think is behind all the disappearances? Comment below, let me know. But yeah, dude, I'm looking forward to the story arc right here, and let's get to it. Previously on the Cult of Omega, this is Cult of Omega Part 2, Gunslinger Spawn is gearing up for a savage battle ahead of him, and Al reaches out to an old ally. So we see Gunslinger Spawn in the barn, getting his shotgun ready, putting the bullets inside. He doesn't know why or how he got to this future, but he does know they'll come for him. Eventually, they'll come. They always do. That's okay. He's ready for them. He's prepared himself by bathing in the barn's cold shadows. He has to seek out the darkness from time to time so his body can endure the sunshine. But unlike other spawns, he likes doing most of his work in broad daylight. Mostly because his enemies haven't developed the same endurance for it as he has. But they've never been able to resist the temptation of an easy target. So he might as well give him one. And this dusty porch in some godforsaken patch of land is the perfect setting. All he needs to do now is wait as he smokes a cigarette and wait for the action to come to him. So meanwhile in Spawn's headquarters, Mark he's been pouring himself over data readings and map sequencing for most of his day. Just like he's been doing every day since Spawn brought him back to his secret hideout. Mark knows it's for its own protection 
but that hasn't made it any easier on him. Jessica Priest walks in and she's like asking Mark, wondering if he knew where Al went. And then Mark is like, didn't I just say he had to go out? He had things he needed to do, but if you don't mind, Jessica, I'm in the middle of something, you know, just let your boy do his work. So Jessica Priest continues peppering him with questions until he can't take it anymore. When he turns, Jessica Priest is gone. All we see now is she spawn looking good too. Well, says she spawn, when you see him, tell him I have to go out too. And Mark is like, just, I just don't get it with you guys. You guys just flick your costumes on and off and come and go as you please while I'm stuck here in a shithole doing all the work, but you get to dive in and out of shadows going, who knows God wears. Don't know how you guys do this stuff so easily. She gives him a little kiss on the cheek. It's like, oh, because response. But you know, you should try it sometime. Anyway, when Al gets back, tell him not to wait up. I had a few errands to run. And Mark is like, errands? What the heck does that mean? So she's gone before she can answer that question. Now, as time goes off, off, the evening melts into morning as Mark continues his extensive research in tracking some of the other spawns that have been unleashed here on Earth because of spawns time rip. But in the back of his mind, he can't get rid of this one nagging thought. F it. So he walks away from his work, work, walks into the room, and he's like, you know, Jessica's right. Maybe I should try being a hell spawn. But he sees Medieval's costume lying on the bed. So he picks up the sword as he attempts to lift it. It's like that Avengers Age of Ultron with all the heroes, except for Thor, try to lift Stoll's moon or hammer, and they just couldn't do it. It doesn't budge. So he's looking to him. So that's just stupid. But he looks at the helmet, and he's like, hmm, well... He gets surprised with this next move. He puts it on and takes some sassy selfies with it. And you know, it's it's kind of funny. But now all of a sudden with the helmet on, he can finally lift the obscenely heavy sword. He's like, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And if Mark can really see himself, Mark would recognize how silly he looks right now. The helmet is five sizes too big for his head, making him look like a human-sized bobblehead doll. And he's also too engrossed to notice a green glow beginning to inanimate from the sword. As the glow builds up, so does the pain Mark feels like his atoms are being shredded by multiple nightly bolts at once. As the pain increases, Mark simply blacks out, though his body continues to convulse. Now back into the barn, like clockwork, Gunslinger's wait is about to end. The only thing that bothers him is how fast they found him, as these crows, you know, kind of congregate together. And it's curious how this small descending flock is a very small flock when he's used to about 100 crows at a time. Not a dozen, but as they morph together, it, be clear, it becomes clear why it's such a small flock. And it's the Redeemer, and he pulls his shulker and I'm like, yo man, that's close enough. You know what these bullets can do to you, right? He's like, I know. I've seen what your victims look like. Most times it was your fault. They got that way. Strange you follow me here, says Gunslinger. That's not how you usually do it. And Redeemer's like, I'm not following you, man. He's like, it don't matter. You're here just like me. But it was, I bet it was willingly though. You know where we are, says Gunslinger. Redeemer's like, we're in the 21st century. And he's like, I figure I saw a bunch of contraptions and this house didn't make so much sense. How do you want to do this? Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to make the first move? And Gunslinger's like, ready to throw down. And Redeemer's like, yo, my man, I'm not here for you. Not yet. I'm here to deliver a warning. Others won't be as patient as I am. They're now in the war against all spawns, not just you. And since you don't have enough sense to hide, you can see what that means. And other flux or crows coming over that happen to be not Redeemer. And Gunstring is like, man, I'm ready. How about you? And Redeemer's like, things are different now. You're not going to be able to control things the way you are in the past. Trust me, I've seen the future and neither of us will be able to stop what's coming. I wonder if that's a foreshadowing for the Scorch now that we know, now now that I'm catching back up into this issue, you know, after after the fact. What about Cog? Is he part of this as Gunslinger? And Redeemer's like, you'll have to figure that out on your own. So as he departs, other far more sinister and darker angels appear and swoop in for their kill. And these dark hell's angels or heaven's angels are like, don't let him escape, brothers. Gunslinger tosses a cigarette to the side and Gunslinger allows himself a smile before some fun's about to begin. The first of his power tip bullets explodes and he shoots and it hits the target on contact. And that shall get their attention as his head explodes. Flank him! He can't disappear in the shadows. The hell spawn lose some of the powers when they time jump. And sadly, Gunslinger Spawn knows they're right about this. So they throw the knives at him. He deflects him or blocks him with this wood panel. He throws the chair inside of the window, goes in as Heaven's Warriors attack him. But what Heaven's Warriors have miscalculated is that this Spawn has been through this situation dozens of times before. He shoots, blasts him off, knocking him out one by one, ending their life. 
Now, the upside of getting pulled forward in time is the innovation that also moved forward with these weapons, creating possibilities and results that even Gunslinger finds staggering. He shoots this sniper bullet, it hits his angel from afar, just <laughs> pretty much takes a chunk out of him. And he realized, yo man, this plane feels kind of level and he's kind of diggity, but he notices something from the side. And he gets tackled like an NFL linebacker tackling a punter. And this is funny because he just gets tackled from the side. And like some overseas military zone that's being raided, this battle festers longer than Gunslinger was hoping. The angels he's used to weren't nearly as trained or as savage as these. So he meets every attack head on with the same intensity as his enemies. On and on and on, Gunslinger fights brutally, doing anything necessary with whatever methods are needed. And he does it until the battlefield falls silent and their screams have all gone quiet. He wins this battle. Now in this panel, halfway around the world, Spawn is with Jim Downing, and a resurrected overkill in cyborg and jim dies like are they going to be okay and spawns like like do you care and he's like well i do care but do your spawn thing maybe you know when your anger wears off you know you'll be able to re resuscitate them or rejuvenate them and jim downing asks so how cyborg doing you know the gorilla and spawns like i don't know yet his metabolic rates aren't coping well with your blood the infusion you gave him created tornado his body can't fire like overkills because it's regenerating slower than his so i don't know if or how fast he'll recover and Jim Downing's like, I can help. You don't get it, do you, says Spawn. You poison him with your blood. You might as well give him a death sentence already. And even if he does recover, he'll be a target for the rest of his life. They're going to be coming for him thinking it's you or me or another Spawn. The same with Overkill. So I think you've done plenty. Back off, Jim Downing, says Spawn. So Jim Downing's like, why not fix him with your powers? And Spawn's like, I can't. Not the way you think I can. I'm recovering too. Trying to regain the powers I lost when I ripped open that 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 hold in time the reason you're alive jim that you're even standing here today that cost me it drained most of what i had what are you talking about what you used on me just use on them i was sending you a message to spawn and jim down is like and now you've got nothing left you have to show me off instead of saving cyber that's some nice priorities and this is referencing the previous issue and spawns like you poisoned them i didn't know that and jim down is like i thought you knew everything ice cold silence follows and then Downey pushes spawn past and he's like okay this is done we, you know my turn so he goes over to Saigor and tells him it's okay big fella this won't hurt so he uses his powers to rejuvenate him in truth Jim Downey doesn't know that but mo but a momentary mind meld digs deep into Saigor's skull when he backs away spawn notices Downey almost losing his entire footing whatever he did took a toll on him too miraculously Minutes later, the cybernetic gorilla seems to have made a dramatic recovery, but Spawn sees Jim hasn't done the same. His body continues to, continues to shiver. You okay, says Spawn? I'm fine, says Jim. Look, man, says Spawn, I'm sorry I came at you so hard. I had to protect him, but you can help with that. They're coming for us, all of us, and a giant war is going to break out. We can help each other. Join us. Get your damn hands off, he says John, Jim Downey. For me? You don't get to come here and threaten me, then change your mind. That's just not how it works. And then Spawn's like, okay. He uses his necroplasm to transport them. But he leaves Jim Downing with the final message. I used to be just like you. Thought I could do everything alone. That I could protect everyone. Instead, people got hurt. And some that I cared deeply about got killed. So you do your thing. Let me know how, th how that turns out for you. A heartbeat later, Spawn, Saigor, and Overkill are gone. And Jim Downing is left to wonder if it was even worth coming out of his recent coma for all this. And that's where we end this issue with Spawn on issue number 312 cult of omega part two look man i'm dig i'm wondering where in the heck omega spawns at but it seems like omega spawn is the back character the backup character behind the scenes character working all this catastrophe all this destruction while meanwhile spawn is trying to figure out what's coming next but i'm looking forward to how this is going to turn out and link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry Previously on Spawn 312, Spawn needs help and the only hero who can be of use is another Spawn. In this case, that is Jim Downing, the man who once wore the same symbiote costume as Al Simmons himself. Now, in this aftermath of Gunslinger Spawn taking out Heaven's armies, these angels, these sinister angels, he needs to clean up the mess that he made and the mess he did make. 
And the more he thinks about that mess, the more enraged he gets, mostly at himself for not reading the signs. And the signs were, Kalishio should practically rub Gunslinger's face in his plans, and like an idiot, Gunslinger took his bait. Cog didn't really think Gunslinger would just join his side by asking. No! He knew this spawn would reject him, just like he'd done a dozen times before. But that was a century ago, and Cog was becoming an old man, more irrelevant as each day passed a con artist whose craft had become tired and stale. At least that was the image Kylie Shiosha projected back then. Was that all a con too? Was he simply lulling everyone into turning their gaze away from him? And the way he spoke the other day to Gunslinger's human host, it almost sounded as if he'd been in this time for quite a while. So Gunslinger Spawn is just thinking about what needs to be done, but and he's just like, what the hell's going on? But for years, Cog bragged about being able to command God's warriors. None paid him much attention. But if he's now come forward in time like Gunslinger and had the power to assemble a horde of dark angels, yo, man, that's a freaking problem. And it doesn't matter how easily Gunslinger took him out. The bigger issue is that for some reason, Heaven has given credence enough to allow, it, to allow their dark soldiers to be under Cog's orders. He threatened many times to hunt down Gunslinger's family and slaughter them one by one. Gunslinger struggled up to the rantings of a madman because how could he hunt down a family that didn't even exist back then and never made any sense? But what's becoming clear is he never met Gunslinger's current family, which had been decimated. He was talking about the family three generations in the future. And Gunslinger knew cutting Cog's head off wouldn't kill him, and that's going back to the previous issues of Spawn 308 and 309. As Gunslinger Spawn gets on his high horse, I mean, he gets on the horse literally and rides off to get this shit done, Gunslinger knew cutting Cog's head off wouldn't kill him. He did it as a symbolic message. The same message Gunslinger has delivered to everyone and everything that's ever gotten his way. You mess with me, I'm gonna mess with you. This creed was simple. The only ones that didn't understand it were God and Satan's servants, and that's fine with him because he's got a little bit more steam he desperately needs to let out. He charges toward the oncoming dust trail, and though since his arrival in time, in the current time, he's seen dozens of adventures he can't quite understand. And this is the first time he's encountered a metal horse, one which Jessica Priest, or in general, a woman is riding, and she's riding that black beast like a pro, baby. What do you mean by that? But Gunslinger is about to find out that not only can women do things they couldn't do 150 years ago, this woman does them better than most almost every other man. And her name is Jessica Priest. She spawns. She gets off. She walks up to him and Gunslinger spawns like, yo, man, that's as far as you go. And she goes up to him like, okay, what's happened to you? I'm sure it's not making much sense. I can help you with that. It's like, I don't need your help. And she's like, yes, you do. You actually do. But she doesn't flinch. And her unflinching manner surprises him. She stares him down unafraid and that intrigues gunslinger spawn okay girl you got one minute i'm guessing you never asked to be a spawn or ever wanted all the bullshit complications that go along with it now here you are dragged 150 years into the future trying to figure this out and how to get back and that's not gonna happen at least not anytime soon but there are more like you a dozen more like you they're all going through the same thing you are but one of them the spawn that brought you here, he's weak right now, and he has nowhere near the power to be able to send you back to your current timeline. That means you're stuck here for a while, whether you like it or not. So you can go out alone if you want, but if that spawn who brought you here doesn't survive, then you're never gonna go back. Girl, says Gunslinger Spawn, I don't know who you are, whose side you're on, but I found all of us from hell. We're not created equal or the same, and some of us are a little bit stronger than the others, and some of us are a lot stronger. And this is Gunslinger Spawn's power me. So don't mess with me, girl. If you know what's best for you, you'll stay out of my way because I need to find someone right now who's more important than you. Okay, whatever. But that horse you're on, it'll take you far too long. And she knows she's planting a seed to need Gunslinger Spawn's help in the future. So she can't change his mind now, but she could plant a seed of goodwill for the future. So she turns that bike and gives it to Gunslinger Spawn. So now Gunslinger has a tiny smile on his face, and you know, he's happy with that. And he just needs a few tutorials on how to ride this metal contraption, as he would call it, so he can ride off and do business that he's got to do and take care of some shit. But yet, something oddly catches Jessica caprice eye something out of place as she goes into the crime scene and investigates and looks over the death of all these dark angels if gunslinger fought a bunch of dark angels 
why is this here? She picks it up and it's a white leaf and she knows it's redeemers. As she contemplates what that might mean, the black angels all begin to disintegrate. Now, somewhere unknown into the laboratory, Spawn is trying to bring it back. Cygor as Overkill is watching on. This is going back to the previous issue. Remember, Jim Downey infused Cygor and Overkill with this blood, which just slowed down the recovery. Now, Simmons is angry. He heads to Mark's room and Mark is not there. And no matter where he looks, Mark seems to be gone. And so is Jessica. And in the computer room, Al finds a pile of Mark's files. Inside, there are a few clues as to where his missing visitors has gone. Al's angry and his anger only grows. What could they have been thinking, he asked himself. And Spawn looks to Overkill like, yo, man, I need to make you undead. You still need time to recover like Cyger. You're already behind schedule. Plus, I have some place to go. He goes to locate Mark and, and Jessica Priest. No, I come too, says Overkill. Though he knows he might regret it, Simmons also knows he is at a weakened state and truthfully, he can use some backup. He takes a few minutes getting prepared, then warps the two of them in his cape before melting into the shadows, transporting them halfway around the globe. And this obviously got a uh, overkill kind of transportation sickness motion, kind of if you want to call it that. I don't know what the term is, but yeah, he's sick. You know, he has to let it out a little bit. Whoever's on that island that Spawn's looking for, he is hoping that that person forgotten that they both can breathe underwater. Yes, Spawn plan is to walk along the bottom of the sea to get to the island. He's tested his weaponry and they can handle being submerged in salt water. He doesn't know the same about overkill being you know submerge that deep into salt water that you know that long ultimately he'll never know that answer because the ground beneath him begin, begins to start and pulsate and the sand begins to shudder overkill's leg sinks into the deep white sand before he's quickly swallowed to his torso something is grabbing him desperately spawn tries to save his drowning partner and any other time he would have easily had the strength but right now not in his current weakened stake and he has to preserve his strength because he don't know what lies ahead of him and he might need it later eventually he loses his grip and he loses overkill leaving only a split second for him to try something different shoots to the ground nothing and then the earth vomits something and this time it's overkill that earth vomits him back out and spawn clutches overkill with the death grip harnessing every ounce of energy he has left the struggle to exact this monstrous partner feels like it's taken forever in reality it's slightly more than five minutes the heroes collapse back and lay on the warm sand, though their solace is short-lived, as the sand again begins to tremble. Harder and harder, the ground shakes, and then it releases its birthing. This fucking monolith right here, when the smoke clears, Spawn sees a gigantic creature with bloodlust in his eyes. More concerning is this thing is also is scarred with the mark of a hell spawn. This guy looks imposing as hell. The first moves comes from Overkill. No, says Spawn, you're not ready. And Overkill just lays Haymaker after Haymaker onto him. What ensues is a bra so completely one-sided that Spawn can barely force himself to watch. Crack! As Monolith lays another punch to his jaw, mechanical parts and guts are scattered everywhere as he impales Overkill with his own fist in his midsection. And now the killing blow as he lifts up and delivers it or he's about to deliver. Spawn's like, stop, don't freaking move. Surprisingly, the creature listens. The hell spawns stare down one another. They call me Monolith. And Spawn's like, I don't give a shit. Lays on, loads everything in his arsenal on him. This may be some malformed hybrid spawn, but as it lunges like some raging bull, Spawn only cares about exacting his revenge. And that's where we end this issue of Spawn, issue number 313. I love how you get introduced of Gunslinger Spawn and Jessica Caprice when they have the first interaction in an engaging way. It shows the challenges that each of them are dealing with. She Spawn knows she needs to plant seeds in the future to get Gunslinger's help later on. So that planting a good seed for good measure, giving him a bike, that is really a good measure that will plant a good seed down the line as we later discover in gunslinger spawn issue where gunslinger spawn seeks her out and as he eventually joins the scorch which we both which we cover the gunslinger spawn issues and all the scorch issues in this channel link in the description check out the spawn playlist gunslinger spawn playlist king spawn playlist and the scorch playlist at the end of this video so yeah i dug it i'm looking forward to catching up on the rest of the issues now spawn 314 i did do a review on way back like a year and a half ago but i'm going to redo it again give it more of a breakdown than I did before. So I'm looking forward to that. And this is a complete story arc of the Cult of Omega. Before we get into this new story arc, 
Previously on the Cult of Omega story arc, Spawn and Overkill travel to a mysterious island to face off against a powerful foe. Unbeknownst to them, he was waiting. And exploding a full force attack with its full might before uttering a word, Monolith charges himself at Spawn and it's focused its three ton frame on another target. Before it was Overkill where he just quickly just brutally annihilated him. Now it's Spawn's turn. And Spawn's body, already weakened from a past battles, is hit from the impact of a giant charging rhino. And for the first time that he can remember, his breath is literally taken away. And Monolith tells Spawn, you're lucky I can't kill you. The master wants to do that himself. As Spawn reels his mind darts, wondering who this creature is, his chest has a mark of a hell spawn. But nothing about this monolith seems vaguely familiar. Is it a Spawn? If so, why doesn't Monolith recognize he's fighting one of his own kind? Because Spawns just don't fight or kill other Spawns, as that was established in the early 300s of Spawns. But that was when Spawn killed Medieval Spawn before Medieval Spawn took over Mark's body. And now Mark is Medieval Spawn. I did do a review on Spawn issue 314, but I want to do this again. Also, I'm doing all Spawn content from 296, 297, which is the history of Spawn, all the way up to its current 300 mark. So. Hey, if you're the first time here, like and subscribe to this channel. You got a lot of Spawn content to catch up on. Unfortunately for Spawn, he won't be given the time to piece any of this insanity together, who this monolith is and why, because he's pounded and hammered in a matter of seconds into unconsciousness. The speed of this defeat is stunning. Now, Monolith needs to finish his mission, which is to bring Spawn back to his master. That means returning to the island in the distance. It will take him almost an hour walking along the sea bottom to that landmark. But you know what? <laughs> Something else happens. And he leaves behind a damage and waste of his battle, which that's overkill. And the light beam seems to be beeping. Now, Monolith and Spawn are teleported and the teleport sequence is complete. The agent and his target have been transported as requested and they secure Spawn immediately. These agents tell Monolith Spawn will be awakened soon. They have exactly three minutes to confine him. So, and one of the agents like, you know, I thought this thing could hold his breath underwater forever. It only breathes underwater for an hour, but it's too stupid to know that. So we had to get him teleported here before he drowns himself. So they put on a sonar helmet on Spawn and then they fire it up and they have to get this bad boy on before Spawn awakes and Spawn's about to wake up. The sonar helmet is put on and they begin the sequence. And just like that, Spawn is rendered useless. Spawn is waking up and they clamp the pressure to 8,000 PSI and you know what? They commence that thing now. The machinery hums for a brief moment before unleashing a sonic wave delivering a mind-numbing assault on Spawn's entire biological neurosystem. The pain and chemicals now pulsing throughout his body are meant to disrupt and deter any attempt to escape. Though the sonic waves are nearly silent and undetectable to the human ears, every lab worker hears the muffled screams of the prisoner before him, and they disengage chamber and remove the mask. Spawn is obviously hurt, and Spawn is like, Ugh, is that the best you got? And Monolith is like, actually, we barely begun. You have no idea what's in store for you, but now that your cleansing is already over, we can ready you to properly meet the master. And Spawn's like, hmm, yes, and my master soon, your kind. My kind, says Spawn, you're scarred like a hell spawn too. And Monolith is like, hmm, do you even know what's coming? What you and your pathetic soldiers are about to encounter? And Spawn's like, if you're brave enough, come closer and I'll tell you what I know. So Monolith does come closer. Spawn whispers something in his ear, then boom, like a head on collision, the headbutt gashes Monolith's forehead. That was a mistake, he says. Whoop! Punches him in the say, you know that impact has to really do some detrimental damage. But guess what, Mama says, you'll be punished for that, along with so many other sins. The cloth sack he puts over Spawn's head is meant to humiliate him more than serve any practical purpose. In the morning, you'll meet our master, says Monolith. Chemicals hiss from his tiny nozzles embedded inside the mask covering Spawn's face. And though he rarely requires sleep, Spawn 
quickly succumbs and falls into darkness. I thought you'll be more resilient than this, says Omega Spawn. It's why I took so many precautions in place. But look at you, how weak you are. I thought by now you learn how to ration your powers, not deplete them so foolishly with clown. Was that worth it? And that's a reference to Spawn issue 300 and 301, which we did do reviews on, and you can check that out as well. Were you mad, says Omega? His voice booms, literally shaking the very ground beneath him. He has rarely needed or wanted to spend time on Earth, not when there is an entire universe to ravage. Yet, he sits here having to waste his precious time navigating a way back off this planet. He is a murderer of entire planets, but only those that help build his energy. For those actions, he's been christened. He is the Omega Spawn. And he continues his dialogue. Dozens of hell spawns have been hunted and killed doing what they were ordered to. Not one of them ever panicked like you did. To the point of acting recklessly, they couldn't reverse the damage you created. All that power you did detonate in your symbiote for to kill clown, there's no going back from that. I've tried. It's not reversible. We're all in prison on this planet. All of us. Even those that want nothing to do with it. But if I'm going to be stuck here, then I'm, my God, I'm going to rule this planet. Every inch of it. So please tell me you at least had some sense of what you, what would actually happen. You didn't really think you'd be able to contain the fallout, did you? And Spawn's like, I knew that explosion would happen. I knew a few might fall through. A few? It wasn't a few, it was hundreds of us, says Omega Spawn. And not just Hell Spawns, everything. Now each of them is either confused, mad, or planning how to become the new king, the ruler of Earth, or any other piece of the dimension they can get their hands on. You've unleashed a chaos you'll never get under control, ever again. Everyone with any craving to dominate will die trying to show that they should be the dominant one, regardless where they were born. Heaven, hell, earth, they're all going to try and annihilate the competition. And it's already begun. Let me show you the first of the traitors. And heavy gears begin opening the ground in front of the blindfolded spawn. The slabs are at least three feet thick, but it's the endless blackness falling straight down that makes the dark abyss so ominous. Every spawn that's ever lived, he's tried to con, wanting them to believe they needed his help, when the only thing he ever wanted was their symbiote, their power. And that person was Coglius Yosher. And Omega Spawn continues his dialogue. I didn't care who conquered Earth. There were far more planets that had more value to rape. That's exactly what I was doing when you tore open time. I was minutes from my victory. Instead, I got vaporized, landing in some ravaged jungle needing to be recovered. The fishermen I saw delivered me to this island. I killed them, of course, but they served their purpose by helping me hide. But Kagalishiosha found me, wanting to steal my powers and kill me. He didn't stand a chance. Jumping around time, all those sentries must have done something to his mind. But I didn't kill him. You know why? Because somewhere in his brain there's knowledge that's been hidden. Knowledge that I can use. Unfortunately, he's not quite willing to share that info, despite all of his torture. So down a hole a thousand feet deep, you'll find a weak, pitiful old man cowering in some corner. Which brings us spawn to why you're here. You know that Kalishi also created the first spawn symbiote costume he ever tried wearing for a time before Malboja stripped it for him because he couldn't be trusted. And that's foreshadowing spawn issue 331, which I did do a review on in this channel. And I'll put the link in description as well. Unfortunately, He's slowly losing his grip with reality, so I need those secrets now! And he grabs Spawn before he embraces that insanity completely. You're the one who's going to extract that for me. And if you think about varying from that mission, remember those sonic waves, the one that caused you so much pain, Spawn. This entire island is wired with that capability. So if you're thinking about escaping, you're just a push of a button for being dropped to your knees. You've got one chance, either make Cog talk or I'll start to burn things beginning with cities that shelter the most humans. Now crawl into that hole and bring me what I want. Before that happens, Omega Spawn suddenly feels a sharp pain in his leg. Who dares as his sword impels the back of his leg? And seconds from now, he'll painfully receive his answer. And that's Medieval Spawn about to go into the attack. And that's where we end this issue of Spawn, issue number 314. Dude, obviously this story arc is starting off with a banger and I'm loving it. What a way to go into it. And this is not the issue you wanna jump into Spawn on, but if you're a collector of comics, you gotta collect this issue because this is the first full appearance of Omega Spawn. And I believe Spawn issue 313 is the first appearance of Monolith. 
But dude, I am gonna do the story arc on 315, 316, and I already started with 317. So we're gonna have a whole bunch of spawn content coming up and any other story arcs you guys want me to cover with spawn, comment below, let me know. With all that being said, link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Previously in Spawn 314, Overkill has been decimated, left for dead, and Spawn has been captured by Omega, who then reveals that he's not the only familiar face on the island prison. Arrogant Omega Spawn had let his guard down, and because he let his guard down, Medieval Spawn was able to go in and impale one of his eyes with this sword. The 25-foot monster had coerced everyone to serve him with fear, never once contemplating for any outcome other than the ones he had planned. Other than Spawn who he had imprisoned, who else would stand against him? No one. Or so he thought. Like an explosion has gone off, the ground shakes as both combatants hit the ground simultaneously. Whatever you are, you're dead, says Omega Spawn. And then with the mere thought, the sword flies back to the hand of its rightful master, Medieval Spawn. Then do it. Slay me where I stand. I've grown weary of your idle threats, says Medieval. Spawn, to your feet. Spawn goes to his feet, takes off the cloth over his head, and he's like, dude, I thought I killed you. You did, but we'll talk about that later. And that's referencing Spawn issue 305, which we did do a review on. For now, the enemy before us needs our attention. I only wounded him. And Omega Spawn lets out a blast, and on cue, he fires huge slabs of debris modified with deadly spikes. Medieval Spawn tells Spawn to grab onto his sword before he's too late. And Spawn's like, what? Just grab it, says Medieval Spawn. Half-blind Omega rallies his powers, one which creates a vacuum pulling our heroes towards in potential impalements. Before he can get swept away, Spawn latches onto the sword. Medieval Spawn isn't afforded the same option. Dig into something, says Spawn. I can't, says Medieval Spawn. Spawn lashes out, catching the armored warrior before it's too late. Omega increases the force of his suction as Spawn feels his grip slowly given away. Come, let me feast on the two of you, says Omega. He opens his mouth wide like a great white shark. Release me, says Medieval. No, says Spawn. You have to. It's our only chance. So Spawn does that. He releases Medieval Spawn. In battle and war, if you're losing to an enemy that's half blind, there's only one move left. Completely blind him. And Medieval Spawn does that with his cape. The monster wars like some wild beast. Medieval Spawn has created his distraction, but now they need to take advantage of it. Spawn, let go, says Medieval Spawn. He does. Instinctively, Spawn knows what he has to do next. His limbs begin to morph as he rockets towards his target and impales him in his chest. Our hero dies away, giving away his giant claws, impaling inside of his wounded chest. Wounded. The problem is, they now have a wounded animal for an enemy that's lashing out in sheer anger. He rips the cape, starts going away, and tells him, You failed like Kaleshiostro. You don't have the strength. None of you ever did. He slams Medieval Spawn to the ground. We need to retreat, says Medieval. No, says Spawn. This has just begun. Spawn had planned his own escape before knowing Medieval Spawn would arrive. Though it cost him the life of Overkill, Spawn began to bond with Monolith the moment they went under the ocean. And see previously in Spawn 314 how that went down, because we did review that as well. By the time they landed on Omega's Island, the two of them already had hatched their mission. One last whisper, one final instruction is all they needed to set their plan in motion. And Monolith has played his part to perfection. Like so many others pulled into a time rift, Monolith was trying to understand what was happening, but Omega was hunting him thinking he could easily make the disoriented monolith into his own servant. But like any slave, you do what you need to survive. You bide your time until a clear path presents itself, and then you claim what is rightfully yours. He's growing, says Spawn. We need him crippled. You've got 15 seconds to figure out how to do that, says Spawn, and Medieval Spawn has a plan. He fought a hundred wars, fought a thousand enemies. And with the pressure of time against him, he confidently understands that although he had 15 seconds, he only needed 9 of them. And he slices off his hand. And by slicing off his hand, a torrent of necroplasm harvested from the souls of his millions of victims shoots wild streams of from his amputated arm. Monolith is like, we need to live. And he is scorching in pain. And Spawn's like, we can't leave, not without medieval Spawn. Then one fire flash strikes Monolith full force, instantly beginning to burn him like a shower of acid. This brother bleeds acid like alien. 
With the force of a car collision, Spawn smashes into the orange barbarian, toppling him out of the flesh eating rays. Unfortunately, it's too late as Monolith lays down dead. But Spawn catches his breath, then turns his full fury towards the Omega Spawn. Without breaking stride, he scoops up a piece of pod which earlier had painfully been holding him captive. Weaving and cutting through the maelstrom, Spawn gets a fix on his other companion. I need to stop his bleeding or we'll never get out of here, says Spawn. Grab his chains and fucking bring him down, he says to Medieval Spawn. Again, Medieval Spawn doesn't hesitate as he again summons everything from his body, then yanks as hard as he can to bring down the Omega Spawn. The behemoth fell again. Spawn races to the tallest pile of rock and debris he can find, then catapults himself even higher. All the while merging his own limited necro power with those of the sonic pod. He unleashes that combo of energy towards the bleeding stump of an arm. Omega Spawn seals it, burning flesh, tendons, and muscles to seal it shut. What's our next move, says Medieval Spawn. He's not gonna stay down. I know, and Monolith didn't make it, so we're on our own. The question is, how do they stop an unstoppable force? This brother is not going down without ease. Omega Spawn, he's been cut, sliced, and fell multiple times onto sharp, broken shards of rock and boulders. He now has one arm, one eye, a gaping chest wound, and he is still will not relent. I thought you could be youthful, says Omega. You could help me break Kalishiosha, but now you're just like him. You all are. This planet has always shown its weakness. With that, he raises his one good arm, triggering a trap. As Omega had boasted, this island had been set up to blanket its entire mass. Screeching sound waves batter our heroes with an intensity that feels like their bodies are about to explode. Wave upon wave, they're bombarded with the sound that deafens all else. And because of that, none of them hear the haunting wails reverberating from the dark, bottomless pit holding Kalis Giostro. Nor do they see the thick black ooze slithering from the pit like a thousand snakes freed from their cage. It breathes with the coursing, scratching timber. It looks partially human, but it is about to show the world. Its only nature is that of revenge, and that is Plague Spawn emerging from the ground. And that's where we end this issue of Spawn, issue number 315. Okay, this is obviously one big ass fight between Spawn, Medieval Spawn, and Omega Spawn, and we still got some more action left with. I love the cliffhanger. I love how this is the first appearance. I believe this is the first appearance of Plague Spawn. If it's a key issue, definitely add it to your comic book collection. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry, and also here at RatedComics.com. Hey, we got amazing comics, exclusives, ratios. Take your pick if you want to add some amazing comics to your collection. But with all that being said... Hidden away from the world, Omega Spawn has been amassing power and prisoners. Trapped on Earth, he seeks a way to go back to the stars. Unfortunately for him, Al Simmons has arrived to stop his ass. But with the help of former enemies, an unbeknown of Behemoths be enough to stop Omega and the oncoming plague. So we begin this issue with this monitor, and this monitor is indicating these three red dots, which indicate the presence of Spawn, Medieval Spawn, and Omega Spawn. But this unknown blip, this white unknown, is what it is and it's the fourth pop-up that came out of nowhere and there wasn't supposed to be a fourth but here it is crawling on all fours as the creature slowly moves into the daylight parts of his body even pour across everything in its path spreading itself in every direction at once like some black inky tar or maybe more like some animalistic disease bent on consuming its prey its host like some kind of plague plague spawn and though a barrage of sonic waves fill the air with a pitch of 10,000 decibels, this thing seems unfazed by it. The sun rays appear more problematic, but only for a moment as this plague quickly adapts. The same cannot be said for either Spawn or his medieval counterpart. Both Spawn and Medieval Spawn feel like their heads are about to explode as the pressure from the sound waves intensifies like a swimmer going deeper in the water. They scream in pain. But Omega Spawn's like, let's end your pain right freaking now. As Omega Spawn rears back, the plague lurches and bares its teeth, summoning a power that stops Omega's fist dead in its tracks before crushing its two spawns. Omega turns, spotting this new adversary not far away. How many of you hell spawns have come to this fucking place? I added that part in there. I guess it was more dramatic, but anyways, it just slipped out. The black creature doesn't move. 
Instead, it gives an intense glare signaling to Omega it's unafraid of him. It grows spikes out of his back, letting him know I'm ready to throw down. The intensity grows louder like an animal caught in some painful hunter's trap. Then its chest heaves as it draws one last gasp of breath, allowing the sonic waves to be only more dominant. It unleashes a sickening shriek, the sound of a soul tortured, unwilling to suppress its pain any longer. A sound that has the same excruciating effect on Omega as the sonic waves have on Spawn in Medieval Spawn. Spawn. Then the scream doubles in ferocity. Dude, somebody's head's about to explode and some of these ears need to be bleeding right now. And as this scream intensifies, it's causing shockwaves to shake the entire island and sending riptides shooting out into a 20 mile radius. Stop, says Omega Spawn. I can give you power enough to rule at my side, to dominate this planet, but not if we're enemies. We crave the same thing, to be their masters. Suddenly, everything goes silent. What is that? Is that a hell spawn, says Medieval Spawn, as they kind of recover from getting their ears, like eardrums all messed up? Whatever it is, says Spawn, this island and Omega, I think it just shut them down. And Medieval Spawn's like, I've never seen one like that. Me neither, says Spawn, but Omega said hundreds fell through the time rip and we don't know whose side he's on. As they turn around, Medieval notices that these soldiers are flanking them, and he tells Spawn to get behind them. They got weapons, and even though Medieval Spawn is newly released into this world, he's seen the kind of damage that this modern warfare can cause. They blast off. Though weak, Spawn knows he has to act as he summons his cape to reappear. We need cover. You're not ready for that kind of foul power yet. I'll follow your lead, says Medieval Spawn, as he creates a necroplasm shield to ricochet the bullets. Now as Spawn and Medieval Spawn are dealing with the soldiers, we go back to Omega Spawn and Plague. And originally, Omega's initial plan was to only imprison Spawn in his desire to use Spawn to help interrogate his sworn enemy, Carlos Giostro. He still doesn't know how Medieval Spawn found them or what this other Hell Spawn wants, but he knows the one thing standing in front of him is different somehow because all Spawns have eyes of green. This is the first time he's seen anything looking close to a Hell Spawn not having an emerald stare green eyes. More enraged to Omega, he doesn't know why it's here. It's almost as if this spawn has its, has its own agenda and it doesn't align with Omega and it's pissing him off. <gasps> what now, says Omega? You going to assert yourself hoping to wash away your past failures? You're a reject. That's why hell threw you out and why heaven won't touch you. And hoping Plague will take the bait, all he does is hiss his response. Say something, says Omega. And Plague does it, which only infuriates Omega even more. You notice how he's growing more horns out of his head, like a necroplasm horn? As Omega is growing these horns out, he continues to say that this war has begun and not all of us can coexist. Just a few of us, the strongest of us, will survive. You loners will be the first to go. Plague Spawn straightens out his body like an act of defiance. At the same time, Omega, wounded as he is, begins transforming his horns into a pair of battering rams. Then he charges full force, destroying everything in its path, everything except his intended target, who simply just levitates away, floating like some soulless god, taunting his enemy below. And what Omega does is he underestimates his opponent. Then again, Plague Spawn underestimates Omega too because he wasn't ready for the quickness, and that speed is what snatches Plague Spawn in midair. Do you hear that? As he squeezes him, that's your bones being crushed by your boy because with my Boja and Satan both dead only one spawn will take over hell's empty throne and whoever lays claim to that title will also rule earth I intend to be that king Omega might have won this but plague spawn is not gonna go down so he impels it with spikes growing out of his symbiote and he resists that claim now as spawn and medieval spawn are taking care of business over there spawn sees Omega sustain another injury he also sees the giant reacting differently than when he received his other wounds and that reaction doesn't bode well for anyone. Omega's powering up, something is about to happen. And Spawn's instincts are correct as Plague is tossed aside. It starts small at first, then Omega channels as much power as his weakened body can harness. His energy building in intensity until this explosion happens at the end. And that is the end of this issue of Spawn, issue number 316. I'm gonna leave a little meat on the bone with you guys because there's a little backstory after this of Jessica priest at base if you guys do decide to purchase this issue support the art support the industry link in description if you wish to do so this is a gangster read and personally in my opinion from reading spawn i'm loving the story arc of spawn issue number 314 through 317 i think that the chain gang story the chain gang set that's one of the best story arcs in my personal opinion i did not say the best it's one of the best story arcs in my personal opinion
Before we conclude the story arc of the Chain Gang set, we just gotta sum up the previous issue. The battle against the Sinister Omega rages on his secret lair, but with the surprise arrival of the Plague Spawn, his inevitable victory starts to slip through his bloody fingers. And we begin this issue where we left off in the previous issue. Omega Spawn emits this huge beam as a contingency plan, and he thought he'd never have to use it. Not with Spawn already in the weakened state, but like so many others, Omega miscalculated what this Al Simmons Spawn was capable of. Add to that misstep the unexpected presence of two more Hell Spawns, both with unique powers contrasting Spawns. Medieval Spawn and the mysterious Plague Spawn disrupted what should have been a simple proposition to get Spawn to negotiate with the imprisoned Kalishiostro. None of that came to pass, so as a last resort, Omega unleashed a move that could easily give away his presence, one that had been otherwise been hidden. And he continues emitting this beam. Spawn, you're never gonna leave this island. Each earthquake he started was meant to frighten but not destroy, at least not yet. Not while I'm standing, says Omega Spawn. Your ass is mine. And Omega Spawn is pissed and he wants Spawn's ass on the plate. He hungry. <laughs> And Mito spawns like, man, this brother is going wild. And spawns like, no, he's just sending a signal. There must be others like him. We have to shut him down. How, says Medieval Spawn. Before Spawn's able to answer that, his cape that's been protecting them from the blast begins relaxing as the maelstrom of the energy loses its ferocity. Then surprisingly to all of them, including Omega, he stops and he's tired, and Spawn knows he's too injured to continue. Spawn's like, something's happening with this island. I'm not talking about Omega, there's something else. Our computer picked up multiple signals. It's the reason why I came here, but I can't find my answers. If this thing is alive, he goes up and just impales him, and stabs him, and impales him, and keeps going to work. And this is an act of slaughter, barbaric act that Medieval Spawn is witnessing Spawn doing. And when Bloodlust hits that kind of feathered pitch, nothing can slow it down. At this point, Spawn is seeing all red or green blood in that case, and the only cure is time because whatever possession that person is going through will eventually pass. And with that passing, a sense of calm and normality replaces the madness. And Spawn's like, I need to find whatever that thing was that came out of that hole. He's re referring to Plague Spawn. And Midi was like, I'll help you, but you need to take a deep breath first. And Spawn knows he needs to take a deep breath, not because of his mental state, but because he knows he's pushing himself more than he's letting on. And Spawn's like, I'm good. Where the hell did he throw that hell spawn? To the northeast. As they go and locate Plague Spawn, they locate, well, they see Monolith, and Spawn just tells them, look, leave him there. He's already done. He's done for. And then from behind, they hear, as they both turn, both of them know what that means. And it's Omega Spawn, and he just will not go down. And Spawn's like, what's it going to take to kill this thing? In other words, can anything kill this monstrosity? And before they can run, and before Medieval attempts to grab his shield to protect himself, or at least slow down the impact, it is too late. And when Omega Spawn lands that boulder on the ground, or that piece of rock on the ground, he's like, finally, I need to rest. And behind his heavy breathing, something is drifting from the pit. It comes a mile deep in a deep black coldness capable of freezing blood. It's not the whimper of a fallen foe, Kalesiostra, who's tortured beyond imagination. No, if you listen carefully, you'll hear something else. And it's Plague Spawn above all else emerges from the hidden crack like a deadly snake. It silently moves across the mountain of rubble, closing in on its target, who is focused on seeing the evidence of his kills. And when Omega Spawn lifts up that piece of boulder or that piece of earth that he smashed Spawn and Medieval Spawn with, he sees nothing but a shield. And to his surprise, he just doesn't know what to expect of it. But slow from his battle, Omega's reaction has been slowed down as well. He's unable to swat aside the chains rocketing from the ground beneath his feet. With the numbing sting, the Lynx tighten around the fresh stab wounds on the back of his neck. The heroes unbury themselves. Medieval, my chains to spawn, grab them and bring it down. And Medieval spawns like, yo man, I can't get any leverage as he tries to bring Omega spawn down. But that's a fixable problem. Plague spawn with his plaque tendrils and his symbiote slither toward this thrashing giant, coiling around each of his legs. His symbiote coils his leg, and by the time Omega notices, it's too late. He can't untie his throat and his legs with just one hand. The two prolonged attack is executed to perfection. The hell spawns are about to complete their own distraction. 
and before he makes impact to the ground spawn tells medieval spawn when he hits the ground cut off his head there won't be time says medieval no we have no choice it's our only choice we don't gut him now he'll alert others and they'll kill millions you do know that do you omega spawn lands and makes impact and before medieval spawn can take his sword and decapitate his head plague spawn drags his prize trophy into the black abyss of the pit where he came from omega is about to get swallowed into the hole and despite his struggles despite his resistance that ass is plague spawn nothing will stop his descent nothing and plague spawns looking at him like good i'm hungry i'm about to eat and medieval spawns like should we go after him and spawns like hell no we don't know what the fuck that thing is whatever's down there i have no peace it's too much of a risk and medieval's like was it a black hell spawn and spawns like no we give off different readings and medieval spawns looking at spawn like you knew omega was on this island and you came anyway yeah but i didn't have a choice you see how fast things are moving so the ground is collapsed and they both have to get the hell up out of there and spawn doesn't know where to go and he doesn't even know why medieval spawns here and medieval spawn tells him i need your help and spawns like my help you nearly killed me the last time we met and Media was like, well, that wasn't completely me. And Spawn's like, what the hell is that supposed to mean? And that's a reference to Spawn issue 304, which we did do a comic book review. And you can check the card up top and I'll put the link in the description so you can check out that review as well. So Media will spawn, carry Spawn up out of there and tells him for now, I'm getting you out of here. That's the deal. And Spawn's like, well, what if I don't trust you? Well, then that makes us even. So they go into this wreckage and it, that casts a large shadow and the two of them melt effortlessly into it. For them, time will tell how this relationship is going to be. But hey, if you follow this channel and you check out the later content of Spawn, King Spawn, and the Scorched, and Gunslinger Spawn as well, you know how this turns out. But for Omega, he doesn't have time. As the hole above him begins to seal itself shut, he's about to discover his powers. The thing he thought made him superior will soon become his downfall. Mixed in combination with the souls of others can create a very horrifying new transformation. And Kalishios is like, it's begun. And this is the beginning now that we know reading into further spawn issues. This is the beginning of Kalishios' transformation to Sin, as we later discover in later issues, which Sin does lay the smack down to spawn. But that's a whole other thing. And that just gives me an idea. I might do a Kalishios Origins Explained video. But with all that being said, that is the end of spawn issue number 317 i thought this is one of the best story arcs i've read the chain gang set spawn issue 314 through 317 link in description if you wish to add this comic book or any of the comic books in your comic book collection support the art support the industry also check out ratedcomics.com to add some amazing comic books to your comic book collection cool rated comics exclusives i mean you can't get them anywhere else but rated comics and they're cool to add to your comic book collection In the previous issue, 317, the island that Spawn and Medieval Spawn were fighting on with Omega Spawn had become too unstable after their fight. Spawn needs to regain his strength, plus Spawn had some unanswered questions about what appeared on the island. Not to mention Medieval Spawn's true motive. In Spawn's sanctuary, Medieval Spawn asks, what place is this? Is it safe? Spawn, not trusting his medieval ass, says to him, it depends on what you came to the island for. Medieval Spawn says he came to help, but Spawn tells him he didn't ask for any help. Tell him, Spawn. Spawn fights to keep his balance because his power was sapped from traveling in the dark with Medieval Spawn. Spawn clearly is having trust issues with, with Medieval Spawn over here. Once answers, just because you fought by my side, bro, doesn't mean I just trust you. Medieval Spawn tells him that most of us are here because of your actions, and he thought it would be wise to keep them alive and help get them all back where they came from. Elsewhere in the complex, there's she spawn she looks like a spawn version of black widow and the punisher i think i can get jiggy with that actually i definitely can get jiggy with that the readings on the computer don't make sense and she concludes mark is here she runs and is stopped when she sees medieval spawn and spawn about to go at it get him spawn she spawn pulls out her pistol and tells him to back the f off hmm something about this woman in firearms i'm just saying medieval spawn tells her to lower her weapon because her weapon can't hurt him she responds with maybe, but I bet your armor is to cover your nutsack. So move. She asks where's Mark and Spawn says he has to be here. He can't shadow travel without one of us. Clearly now they're trying to find Mark and get over one another's trust issues. She Spawn, aka Jessica, doesn't trust Medieval Spawn either. After the standoff, Medieval Spawn tells her to go help Spawn find a friend. He gave her his word that he won't move. Well, I guess there's still honor among Spawns. After a slight stare down, she decides to go help Spawn 
and reminds him to don't go anywhere. Spawn doesn't like the fact that she left Medieval Spawn alone and reminds her that he tried to kill him. She also reminds Spawn that he also saved him, and you're both even so get over it. She's more concerned about Mark. I like this character. Eventually, a loud noise catches their attention, and guess who it is? Your boy Mark. She spawned. Jessica asks Mark if he's okay and why he's sitting here. He says he was looking at his laptop and he was here. He can't remember why or how he ended up here. Mark asks she spawned why she's still in costume and she says, I just got back and she reverts to normal form. Now that's what Black Widow and Punisher looks like in woman form. Where were you at on Valentine's Day? <laughs> Joking aside, I like how she can be rough around the edges and still have compassion too, and yet she's still no nonsense. Spawn still has his issues with she Spawn showing compassion. She's not having it. And Spawn goes to check on Medieval Spawn. You think he's still in the same spot? Her last question to Mark is, why were his glasses in the lab? We're gonna go back to that. When Spawn gets back to where Medieval Spawn's supposed to be, he sees his armor on the ground and whoever was in that suit has now escaped. Spawn feels like someone is playing games and he has no mood to play. It ain't recess. Spawn leaves the scene and sees Cygor on chains and he asks who would be able to get so close to be able to torture. That's a grown ass gorilla, yo. Spawn goes to rescue. She Spawn realizes that Mark's been blacked out for over three hours during their conversation. And somewhere in that time he went to the lab or someone dragged him there unless there's another reason his glasses were on the floor. Mark's memory is slowly starting to come back on what was on the screen and it's possible it had something to do with Spawn's mission. Something about the data on the screen wasn't matching up to the energy tracker they were following and possibly new targets that were popping up. Spawn shows up pissed that Krygor is hanging and demands answers and he's getting tired of stuff happening when he's gone. She Spawn tells him to take a breath and he ain't having none of it. Spawn says by taking a breath, they can keep advancing their agenda and their forces while we sit on our hands. He explains on the other side, we'll do anything for victory. He reminds her that that other side killed Mark's girlfriend Killed Spawn's wife, Wanda, and they kill anyone, everyone you care about. Then they'll disguise themselves as children of old ladies. Anything that'll gain your sympathy. Do you want to take a breather? Do it away from me. I ain't got time for this. Spawn is obviously hardened and tells Jessica to don't trust your eyes because you may have to shoot a five-year-old. He even tells her to shoot him if it comes to that. She Spawn leaves the scene. It might be kind of hairy for her, but even though she's compassionate, she also has a no sense, added, no sense kind of attitude. I dig it. Mark tells Spawn that he needs to show him something in the computers. He's been tracking as many targets as he could, but one area seems to be a conduit for new manifestations like some kind of a portal, the island that Spawn just came from. Mark shows on the screen that the targets keep disappearing and reappearing there, but it's not clear if it's the same thing or something different. Spawn concludes they must know we're on their track and then maybe that's why Mark blocked, Mark, Mark blacked out and they're exerting their powers trying to feed trying to get into my headquarters. Though that doesn't explain the presence of medieval Spawn, Spawn decides to further look into this. There's war where that came from, but I got to leave a little meat on the bone for you guys and girls. In this store, we open up in a little town called Facetano, Italy, where we see this restaurant owner named Gino, who's just greeting customers, being charming, taking care of his employees, happy-go-lucky. I mean, not typical vibe of Spawn right here, where it's dark and violence, but something's about to happen here. He gives, he tells this couple that their baby is cuter than my own child, children. He tells his Mrs. Giovanni, your elegance and grace are always welcome here, makes her blush, gives her a kiss. Hey, Gino, we need a bottle of Pinot Grigio. Okay, let me go to my, my wine cell and I'll go get it. His staff is like, Gino will help you out. And Gino says, no, I know where it's at. It's in the cellar. Now we're starting to get more of a Spawn vibe over here. Down the hall in the cellar, there's a faint sound that displeases Gino. And then he tells these people that he's holding in, in his cellar for torture. I told you before, silence is all I will tolerate. Unless you wish to be tortured some more. I'm thirsty. I need some water. I don't have no water around here, but I do have wine and split tortures her some more mentally with the vino. Oh man, come on, Gino. Then all of a sudden, temperature drops and it gets chilly where Gino sees his own breath and we see Spawn enter the building and Spawn tells Gino to turn around. Gino and Spawn have this altercation like, who gave you permission to be here? I told them I was never to be disturbed. Who sent you? Spawn to ask Gino, I've told you, I'm told you have one of the files. Gino says, someone lied. 
And then Spawn tells him, well, not the way I ask questions now. Let, you should have seen how fast your vampire friend sold you. So Gino's an undercover vampire and lunges his attack and is so quick and gets the jump, actually gets a couple, lands a couple punches and kicks with Spawn. And <laughs> Gino's like, <laughs> look at you, you're nothing. Whoever sent you did their homework. And he tells him, I had people like you come to me before, but you know what? If you tell me who sent you, I'll make sure your death is quick. But first, tell me who sent you. Spawn Rise is like, oh my gosh, bro. Like, look, man, you're not that good. You think I'm hurt? You're not that good, man. And Spawn tells him, but they should have told you and taught you what a hell Spawn looked like. And Gino says, Spawn, they say they killed you. Well, someone lied. I love the clap back on that one. The thing is, a portion of Spawn's symbiote suit that he wears is a touch of vampiric, vampiric blood that's cursing through it. So Spawn lands his punches, lands his blows, and they go at it, and it's three minutes of just ass whooping for this brother vampire Gino over here. And then Spawn does something that's like an insult to a vampire, and I take this as equivalent to calling a woman that word. You know what word I'm talking about, fellas? That C where that is almost unforgivable if he ever utter those words. So he yanks his fangs and tells him, you're gonna tell me what I wanna hear. And he eventually gets told where the files are, throws Gino in with the torturers and the torturers are like, oh, but you know, aren't you gonna save us? And Spawn gives him this, hey, you know those children you murdered at the Syrian village? That was your fifth village, wasn't it? I know who you are, I'm not here to save you, I don't give a crap about you, but if you wanna exact your revenge or if you find a way to escape, do what you gotta do. So Spawn slices open the, 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 the cellar where a dozen of high-end, expensive bottles of wine where employees think that they're only for special occasion, but it turns out the key is there, Spawn finds a file, all is good. And what Spawn is trying to do is heaven and hell have waged war for eons. And as part of those battles, they've also had thousands of loyal agents across the planet as they build power bases capable of destroying their enemy and subjugating humanity. Spawn's mission is to find them and kill them at one time. So in the city of New York, in this dilapidated, rundown apartment, he runs into this detective, Sam. Wakes up Sam, Sam was like, whoa, whoa, I'm not having it. And Spawn's like, well, hello there, Sam. Well, that's not how Spawn talks. And then Sam was like, look, man, you're crazy. Like, I could have just blown your head off. What do you want? Spawn asked, where's Twitch? I don't know where Twitch is. And Spawn's like, look, I couldn't find him at home. And Sam tells you he's on vacation. So yes, after some dialogue, Spawn hands him the file. Give this to Twitch when you can. It's names and lists of corporations or some heavy hitters that you want and then sam's like well he asked the question we all should be asking why aren't you doing your boogeyman thing on us spawn's like look man i'm busy with i'm busy dealing with non-human pieces once i got things to do and if i i need some help handling this handling this and if i don't get a handle on it soon then it may be too late even though i like the dynamic where two people don't like each other they kind of respect each other in a way or they see i don't they don't see eye to eye but he but sam understands the magnitude of what's going on here now, you know, this is a follow-up from Spawn's Universe issue number one. You can check out the review there. We see Cyborg tapped up, trapped up, and just taken away. And Jericho says, hey, man, look, our mission was set back, and Cyborg is our primary asset. We thought Cogs was going to be the bait, but no, Cyborg is the bait, and Spawn will come after him. So, you know, we're going to use Cyborg as bait here. We see Jericho talking to a mysterious figure on the phone saying that in a few days, you know, Cygor is our best bet to lure Spawn back to us. And why will your, and the mysterious figure asked, why will your plan work any different than the last time? Well, hey, you know, it, it, we just, it's, I guess it's something that Jericho's saying, hey, I'm gonna take matters into my own hands, so just let it be. When the medication of Cygor fades out, he's agitated, he's pissed. So they put on this mask and about to drug him some more to sedate him. But guess what, Cygor goes, for all puns and intended purposes, ape shit. But I love this point right here where he just bites this guy's arm off and raise, truck flips over, and as the trailer crashes, there's someone waiting from above, and this person is calling out Spawn. Hey, if you want Cyborg, he's gonna come through me. I'm calling him out. It's just like, okay, who are you? Hey, well, you know, you, you look like you, you mean business and all that. And as far as the book goes, I, I, I this is what I would love Spawn's universe to be short sweet punchy but you know what i guess the amount of story you get cool this is cool right here i mean 
short, sweet, catchy, interesting, and it just sets you up and it, and it leaves you want more. This comic is all about the fight scenes, and man, in my opinion, it doesn't disappoint. We start off with Cyborg on a rampage and give this new villain Soul Crusher a little taste of his mighty gorilla power and strength. I didn't know that Soul Crusher is just a human. Cyborg crushes his gun and gets this soul knotted out the way like a toddler. Even though this book is mainly about the fighting, so the monologue, which is where Spawn goes into the backstory of how Spawn needs Cyborg to help him fight, Spawn is really has a really interesting backstory to that, but I have to leave some meat on the bone for you guys. Now it is revealed that Soul Crusher is using this fight with Cygor as a way to attract Spawn, forcing Spawn to draw him into this fight. Soul Crusher lands a blow to Cygor that sends him into space, literally. This is an awesome book just to be straightforward and it doesn't provide much backstory, but that's okay. I wanna see some fighting. But that doesn't mean the monologue in this book is rich in backstory, it is. And what's going on with Spawn internally? When Cyborg lands in the ocean and Soul Crusher goes after him and dives right in to finish it off, Spawn shows up and stops this bull jive. And Spawn doesn't give a damn that this guy is just a human. Spawn is looking to unleash his full power and wrath on this guy. But Soul Crusher's suit is protected by military gray tech. Soul Crusher gets cocky and says, Hammer away! You can't get past the shield. And if you can't get past the shield, I don't know how you got off the Omega Island. Now he tries to flex his superiority to Spawn by saying, I don't know how you non-humans are better than us non-humans if they couldn't if you if y'all couldn't unlock the dead zones. Spawn plans on dealing with him later, but in the meantime, he realizes he has to retreat and get Cyborg out of the water because for all he knows, Cyborg can't breathe underwater. Out you go into the land, prepare for a rough landing, my man. Spawn has to check if his boy is okay, and initially it doesn't appear that he'll make it. Eventually, Cygor barely opens his eyes and spawns elated and plans to get Cygor to safety and remove him. Well, that's short-lived because Soul Crusher blinds him with an attack and he wants to prove himself. Soul Crusher seems to be a little overconfident and perhaps Soul Crusher may have underestimated Spawn. And the later pages, we see Spawn's true power or close to his true power being unleashed. If you're hoping for Soul Crusher's backstory, you're not going to get in this book. And that's okay. This is a great issue if you're going to enjoy this. Lots of fighting and cool looking visuals. Soul Crusher to me seems very interesting. I'm curious to see what his backstory is because we have no backstory indication of him aside from his military grade tech. And this book is definitely worth the price if you're into that kind of stuff. If you're new to Spawn and are just looking for a straightforward issue to start reading to Spawn, this is great for you too. Link in description, by the way. I'm in this review here to leave some meat on the bone for you guys, and I'm confident you will thoroughly enjoy this issue. We begin this issue off with somewhere unknown. Spawn calls the meeting with Jessica, aka She Spawn and Mark. Both are wondering what this meeting is all about. Spawn pops the question, where is Medieval Spawn? Jessica's like, are you kidding me? That's what you called us here for? Spawn's confused because his team is not as concerned about it as he is on the whereabouts of Medieval Spawn. Spawn's reason is it's been five hours since the sensors detected him and he wants to know where the hell he is. It's kind of funny with the back and forth how they just don't seem to think it's a high priority problem like Spawn does. Mark does come to terms with Spawn and agrees that Medieval Spawn's armor is still in the lab and he saw it while grabbing something to eat. Jessica sarcastically says, yeah, whatever. I'm sure he's in the bathroom for all we know. I'm sure he'll turn up. Mark asks Spawn what he would like them to do. Spawn tells him don't do anything because you can't. It's one of the many problems that they can't help him with. Spawn wants to know who is Medieval Spawn. They can't help him with that. Why did Medieval Spawn rescue him on the Omega Island? They can't help him with that, and that's issue 317 callback, I believe. How do you know he was there? And four, and also once upon a time, Medieval Spawn tried to kill me. Spawn doesn't know his motives and or his motivations. Jessica thinks Spawn is paranoid and reminds Spawn that Medieval Spawn saved you on the island, and if it weren't for him, Spawn would be stuck on the island. Spawn finishes with that, that he's not worried about Medieval Spawn specifically. Spawn tells Jessica that this place is supposed to be undetectable and impenetrable. Instead, he's got strangers coming and going. Spawn's mind is going all over the place as he deduces none of this happened before Jessica and Mark were in the picture and he believes they're both liabilities now. Naturally, they're both shocked to hear. Jessica reminds Spawn that they both had normal lives and Spawn brought them into this. I mean, this is getting heated 
and comic book petty in a good way. Great way to build up the stakes and tension here. I hope something happens and Spawn will realize that he needs them more than he realizes. Spawn walks away shaking the floor with every stride he makes. In another room, Spawn goes over files from a few enemy factions because they are remains of the two large pieces that are still missing that Spawn is trying to solve. One, how many beings fell into the time paradox rip, some of who are Spawns themselves? Two, is finding those from heaven and hell that were already here. Jessica and Mark still debate what's really going on with Spawn, but they both know they need him, even though they think he's getting worse. From Spawn's perspective, he's getting more realistic as he sees forces of heaven and hell beginning to become more public with their actions. Once upon a time, the Shadow Players, forces of heaven and hell, wanted no part in revealing themselves. Now they just don't care and it's all out there as they become cocky and careless. Because of the time rip, it's a literal free-for-all as demons and angels and humans are all making new alliances. Spawn going through the files earlier leads into this guy, Paul Green. Normal looking dude with a sus living arrangement and hygiene. That's just nasty. But then again, that's Spawn doing that to him. And Spawn know what Paul fears. Spawn asks Paul for the files and where did he hide them? Spawn needs those files for fighting this war. Paul tells them he put them in a safety deposit box in the bank in Pittsburgh. You can have all of them. I'm done with that life. Paul asks if Spawn is fixing to kill him. Spawn tells him I have what I want. You're not worth my time. And they'll hunt you down in search of me. As Spawn gets ready to leave, Paul summons his attack dogs. Spawn's like, come on, man. She. You're sending dogs on me? I'm tired of my enemies that haven't done their homework. Paul's shocked that Spawn can control his dogs and those dogs go docile. He opens the door and sees what he calls an unimaginable horror. The prisoner mother tells Spawn, I'll do whatever you want, just please leave my baby alone. Oh man, this is rough. Spawn wants to make sure his instincts are right and that this isn't a trap. He puts his hand on her head and her past flashes back and plays out like a movie for Spawn. In short, she was 16 years old and a vibrant cheerleader when she was painfully shoved in the back of a van. She became this guy's pet and slave for four years, abused, raped, starved, and raped over and over again. Such trauma she went through. To make matters worse, he tried to beat it out of her to have a miscarriage, but she ended up giving their daughter, which only infuriated Paul even more, so the beatings became worse. She will walk with the limp, and she will never see clearly out of one of her eyes for the rest of her life. He took someone with kindness and beauty and broke her because he could. When Spawn uses his power, this fills him with misery of others. He tells her that he's sorry for what she went through. He pulls back from the contact from the girl. Al Simmons sees something move in the shadows. It's his ex-wife, Wanda, the only true love of his life. Yet all he could think of is if men and immortals can do something like this to a young woman, they could have done it to Wanda and Spawn's blood begins to seethe. And then Wanda goes and Al wonders if he's losing his mind. Paul comes in dark and grimy like a mofo. You don't look so good, Spawn. I know it'll make you feel better. Why don't you go ahead and have Adam, Melissa. She's a good girl. She wouldn't mind. It'll make you feel better. With those words, Spawn realizes he's not losing his mind. He's losing control. And he screams. The louder his scream gets, the darker it gets. First, it was just the basement in the house. And eventually, the entire county stripped of all light and manner. Though some will try to use their flashlights and generators, it will not work. No one will be able to see light and fire. The blackness is upon them. It really pissed Spawn off. As always, I got to leave a little meat on the bone with you guys for this book. And I'm just going to end it with, as far as the case with Medieval Spawn, we see Mark back in the lab trying to do some work and get some things done. Despite the orders that Spawn told them earlier, they're the liabilities and they should leave. Spawn gets back, he hands in the files. So in the case of Medieval Spawn, it has a very interesting point at the end, a very interesting plot twist. And we get to see what it's all about and get more of a backstory about Medieval Spawn, who, what, and how he came about. And it's a twist that you're not expected. What I got to say about this book is, I thought it was a cool read compared to King Spawn and the previous issue, Spawn 320, where it was just all out action, all out intense, and just, it kept you hooked. To me, this issue felt more like a filler, and that's okay, because, you know, you kind of have to slow it down a little bit. I mean, I guess this is more like foreplay before you hit us with the action. That's the way I look at it, but you guys may look at it differently. Is this issue worth the purchase of the comic? In my opinion, 
Yes. Now we start off with spawns on another hunt for a secret file pertaining to the shadow players and he makes his horrifying discovery in the basement of one of their former associates. You can see issue number 321 for a reference, but now when Spawn was so angry, a blanket of darkness has spread across the town in a 12 mile radius. He stands over the imprisoned woman and finds her baby and he cannot find the words to describe what he's thinking. Now this vampire guy, I believe his name is Dave, one of the shadow players is asking Spawn, what'd you do to my dogs? They're not listening to me. And then Spawn's like, <laughs> they resonate with me and he's controlling the dogs now. Spawn is just livid and pissed and like a lion attacking its prey. Spawn lunges at his enemy to full speed that he rarely shown and is just going to work on this guy. Spawn hits him hard enough to crush cartilage, crack bones around his nose and eye sockets and crack three ribs. And you know what, this is all too easy for Spawn. Knowing the weak will always make one last feeble attempt to survive, he grabs his piece and he's like, you know what kind of shells I have in here? The kind that'll kill you. Spawn retracts his cloak and he's like, all right, take your shot, stop threatening me. Fully exposed, he shoots him. And Spawn is not even showing even the slightest bit of pain in this instance. And this guy is like, what the heck have you become? And then he makes one more last feeble effort to shoot him. And he's like, bro, don't you dare smile at me. And a chain knocks him across the face, broken. The vampire struggles to breathe as he feels his body begin to quiver and sweat. I don't know why he's doing this. He tells the vampire, I need you to say one word to me. Monday. That's it. Say it. Say Monday. And it, th that plays a part later. Why? You'll see. But if there's one thing that Spawn knows, it's that vampires re rely on nourishment. So draining the blood from the victims to sustain their compulsion to always feed, he attaches these roaches to go in and start <laughs> and start draining blood from this guy. And you can just see like the blood being drained from his eyes. So Spawn approaches the lady and the baby and she's like, please, she's scared. She doesn't trust him because he's in a Spawn form. So what he needs to do is he needs to revert back to the Al Simmons form so he can build trust and get her out of there and get her to safety. She nods for approval that, okay, I'll let you carry me out. And this girl's been raped and abused for four years and you gotta read the previous issue on that. Al Simmons takes her to the doctor. She's like, what are you doing here? I'm calling security. He's like, no, she needs your help. I'll beg if I have to. But I'm telling you, she needs someone, and you are that person. But it's not me. I'm better at other things. Now, we get breaking news coverage of the girl Melissa being rescued from three different perspectives. I'll, you guys could go into that if you decide to purchase the book. Link in description, by the way. So as the nation is gripped with Melissa's return, Spawn has some work to deal with with this vampire. He tells Paul, wake up. We've been waiting. And he's like, oh, what you gonna do? I need you to be quiet. Are you gonna kill me? Perhaps, but I need you to say one thing before I do anything. What day is it? Say it's Friday. And Paul's like, okay, it's Friday. Exactly, today's Friday. And you haven't eaten in nearly five days. And for a vampire, that could be pretty severe. No blood, no food. It hurts, doesn't it? Kind of what you did to that poor girl. So he regurgitates the, the bugs that have been sucking or drinking the blood out of him and they had their fill. He's still alive but he's weak and feeble. And a spawn drops a rat on the ground. And he tells him, that's right, watch that mouse because whatever whatever your body is trying to do to compensate for your lack of energy, your lack of blood, I made sure those roaches ate away from your insides. If you don't eat soon, you're gonna die. That mouse is fresh blood and down that skinny hallway, there's lots more blood on the other side. I know you can smell it. Your decision right now will decide your, your fate, life or death, make your choice. He's like, okay, okay. And I guess he's not sure what the heck Spawn's all about. So Spawn slashes a cut in his face. Like if that makes your choice easier, I made a little cut in your face on your face to bleed out. So now the bugs can smell your blood. Make your choice, Paul. Upon entering the hallway for the rat, these spikes come down and crush in this guy and, and, and cause him excruciating, unimaginable pain. And Spawn uses this with this cape to build it as a way to torture in hopes for reminding Paul about all the days he inflicted pain upon that teenage girl without a moment's pause for concern and passion. Spawn is simply returning the favor and these roaches are just drinking more of his blood as he continues to drip blood. Spawn tells him there are 1,307 uh, spikes in that cave. It's specifically the number of days Melissa was held captive under your guide. And he's just getting to work and bloody and just in pain and he crawls out of there finally. And Spawn's like, whoa, you look horrible, Paul. 
guess I've been a bit abusive to you like you were to your dogs. I can commune with animals and sp now they're under spawn control. Here's the key to unlock the door for the other side. But the bugs, yes, the bugs on the other side, they'll drink you. So it's one thing or another. You can go and try to get out of there and deal with the bugs, but at least it's your chance for freedom. But I promise your dogs, I'll feed them and they haven't eaten since Monday and they're really pissed at you. I thought this book was great. I thought, hey, if you like torture, if you like uh, the, the fact of getting even or revenge or one of those revenge stories, this is definitely great. It's great to add to your personal collection. I left some things out for the sake of, you know, gotta leave some meat on the bone for you guys. So we begin this issue with several days in this small town. Darkness is surrounding it and his electrical power source has been cut off. Spawn issue 322 and 321 cover that because of Spawn's power and what he was doing. But people wanted answers and no one seemed to have any. History has proven that a thousand times over that in times of chaos, it's the best time to strike your enemy. Keep in mind of that. Following that lesson, a massive cluster of bats descend and they conform and they mold into this vampire named Rebirth and his other vampire cartel. They're surfacing here because Rebirth wants to talk to Spawn and he tells his crew, stay here, I'll signal you if I need you to, to, to come help me out. So he goes into the cabin where Spawn tortures the other brother from the last issue. Rebirth enters the cabin, he's like, he senses Spawn is hiding, he's like, I know you're in there. I smell your victim's blood. His demand is only met with silence as he opens the door and he is offended. Like, you know what? You're really gonna play this cheap parlor trick on me? Spawn, bruh, he better than that. And Spawn emerges with a pistol, ready to shoot. And he's like, why are you here? And Rebirth is like, you know why? For the same reason you are, to survive. What is this war is about? For us to outlive and outsmart our enemies, right? And Spawn's like, and who exactly is our enemies? And he's like, okay, bro, I sense sarcasm. You think? And he knows he senses sarcasm because he believes Spawn thinks he's better and he's different than somehow than them, but they have a common purpose, you know? And that common purpose is to survive this war. Rebirth tells Spawn they're trying to isolate you, pushing away from possible allies. Heaven and hell like it when you're on your own. I'm here to offer you an option. And Spawn's skeptical, he's like, hey, I believe there's an alliance between us. It's not a comfortable alliance, but it'll serve its purpose. And as the resistance grew, at the very least, they have to change their tac tactics because you and I combined were formidable enemies to them in this war. And Rebirth tells them, I'm getting tired of their BS because both think I'm loyal to the other side. Heaven doesn't tr trust me because of my group's bloodline and hell doesn't trust me because they're suspicious of our, that we share our DNA with the humans. That makes us distrust and outcasts and we're living in our own purgatory. And you know what? Let's join Spawn. And Spawn's like, nah, bruh, I'm not interested. He's like, well, I thought that'd be your attitude, but you can't hide from your vampiric genes forever, Spawn. Every hell Spawn has that vampiric genes. So you know what? That kind of makes us brothers. And Spawn's like, whatever, bro. But this guy is like, but make no mistake, I'm the bigger brother here. And then with the slight gesture, Rebirth waves towards Spawn, and he lurches back like he's been shot instantly feeling pain in his chest and even though spawn has no human lungs he's struggling to breathe at this point and rebirth knows this he's like you're still weak spawn so stop pretending i get how you could take one of their low-level agents and he's reference referencing the other vampire that spawn tortured and murdered and the last issue whenever spawn uses his powers he has less power to use for the next time he has to heal up he's like you're weak and Rebirth tells him, look, we've been taking advantage of the current situation you created. Thanks to this darkness, my army thanks you. We capitalize to feast. And it shows all these vampires of his crew just feasting. The news crew is not knowing what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. And they're getting feasted and feasted. This is just awesome horror Halloween comic book. So Rebirth is like, all right, I'm going to ask you again. Tosses him like a ragdoll, ripping the floor with Spawn. He's like, can I count on you? And he lifts up the sofa for two reasons. One, to show his physical prowess. And two, he rips off the leg of the sofa. And he's like, look, if you think I'm taking pleasure in this discussion, I'm not. I'm just trying to find an alliance here. And my boss is aware that you sealed all the dead zones on the globe. Which will bring the wrath of every one of your enemies who wants to leave this earth. You can't defeat them all, Spawn. 
Maybe for a while, but not forever. Eventually, you'll make a mistake and they'll catch up. Your guard will be down and you have to go back to hell with your tail between your legs. Do you want that? Think about it. We can help give you protection, Spawn. And he just leans over Spawn, like showing physical dominance. And Spawn is asking for how long? Well, until it no longer is mutually beneficial. Here's your mistake. We may share the same bloodline, but I'll never trust your kind. Wrong ass, and he impales Spawn, and you can tell the pain is just excruciating where Spawn's yells is heard outside the cabin and beyond. And Rebirth puts his hand behind his back, posturing himself, trying to say, look, I really have tried to be reasonable as I can, but what can I do if you're so determined to self-inflict your own defeat? And unfortunately, I can't take the chance you'll join them in the moment of weakness. So, if you don't join me, I got to, I can't leave you here, bro. He impels Spawn again. Surely we can agree, at least agree upon that. So join me or don't join nothing at all. And Spawn's like, you're right. I don't have my full powers back, but I've got enough. And Spawn is, closes his eyes and when he uses his entire body and he wheels himself up slowly to his feet, vibration from the floor starts to happen. Rebirth is like, okay, he insti instinctively takes a step back, unsure what is transpiring. And everything is shaking, the earthquake is happening, trembles and it gets more intense as the tremors and the undead stick their hand from underneath the ground, exposing their rotting limbs and claw their way to the surface. And guess what? Just like Rebirth has his crew and he's the leader of their crew, and like the vampires, the undead too have a leader that they serve. And that leader is you know who. Then suddenly everything stops shaking. The growls of things in human can be heard all around them. Then Rebirth is like shocked and in terror. What did you do? Did you call the wild animals to come to your aid? They've come too late to protect you. And Spawn's like, <laughs> I'm not the one needing protection. And so smirk crosses Spawn's face as Rebirth realizes he he doesn't like what that might mean. So he rushes outside because this is jeopardizing and dangerous to his crew. And just to be petty, I love how heroes can be petty. Spawn seals the door, but that's not gonna do much. It just stalls him for half a second. So he kicks the door open and he is in shock at what he sees. A group of zombies so large as to dwarf the vampires he had brought with him. For every one vampire, there are at least three decayed corpses. That's his, those are not good odds. And the leader of the vampire knows whatever choice he makes next, whatever command he gives, it better be the right one. Because if it's not, he'll lose the confidence of his tribe forever. And only if they survive. And Spawn's like, the dead, I could raise them. Did your boss tell you that? He said you changed, it's why we thought we should join arms to harness our power against God and say, not because you should care about us, but because you care about the humans. And he looks at Spawn again. He have a shot at keeping this planet safe of eliminating those who harm humans. You know the stakes. Think of what our armies could be. So he's telling Spawn, if you're raising the dead, this is just a small taste of what you and I can actually do. And Spawn has thought about it. Two, there's two things he's learned from it. From it. Never trust anyone because they all have agendas and always, regardless of your physical health, make them fear you. He impels Reaper, kicks it to the ground, and they're like, our leader attack. And they plan to attack, but they know they can't attack unless they want to leave and, and raid through this rabid monsters of undead. Remember, for every one vampire, there's three of these undead. This is an awesome book, and I got to leave a little meat on the bone with you guys. What he does to Rebirth next as a show of physical dominance is just <laughs> unreal. And what he allows the undead to do to Rebirth is just super unreal, too. Now, what I love about this issue is Spawn's alone. He knows he needs help, but who can he trust? And eventually, the moral is, if he keeps going on with this alone, and he used every ounce of strength in his body, to show that he's not weak, even though he clearly he's still in pain. How long can he keep this up? And it took everything in himself from passing out. And what if the next time around someone decides to test him out? It, it is just not enough. And that's what makes this issue off it awesome. And I don't know what the what's next gonna happen here. This is a great read, fantastic read. Link in description if you guys want to get a copy of this book. We begin this issue with goblins being massacred in nice swords, bloody, gory, just this beautiful, beautiful mess that we could just admire real quick. It's Mark, Medieval Spawn. He, when he goes into this transforming into Medieval Spawn, he doesn't know what happens to him. It's like for weeks now, Mark has been trying to figure out 
where he goes when his medieval persona takes place. Every time he transfers back to himself, it's like a sense of like dark memory screaming void. Like he strains to hold on to his memory in his mind, but within seconds when he transformed back, that memory is gone. Then we hear a voice saying, it's not easy, is it, Mark? And it's Jim, and I don't know who Jim is, but this goes back to way back in issue number 312. And Jim comes over there, talks to Mark, is like, hey, bro, it looks like you ain't the only one gripping with this madness. And Mark's like, okay, well, how did you find me exactly? It doesn't matter how. What matters is we need to get out of here and talk about a few things. So they go to a nearby diner. Jim tells Mark, there's been agendas from both sides after me, pretty much since I woke up. So for the most part, I've been trying to stay ahead of him and stay alive. And how's things going with Spawn? And Mark's like, you know, I get a lot of lectures to Spawn and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of like he's on this self-righteous path or whatnot. So Jim asks him, well, tell me about the hell what's been going on with that. So Mark tells him, it's been a couple months since I've been messing around with this helmet and it's kind of attached itself to me. I try to get rid of it a few times, but it just keeps reappearing. And to be perfectly honest, I'm kind of losing my self-control with this just a little bit. So Jim asked Mark a question. Can I ask you something? Do you trust Al? He's like, what do you mean? It's not a trick question. I mean, do you trust him? I mean, yeah, we both know he's not exactly the most stable guy, but I do trust him. Yes or no. The reason I asked is because you don't know if he realizes it or just doesn't care, but either way, he's on the verge of bringing down the whole world with him. He's always thinking about saving humanity, but he's turned the planet into his personal war zone. He ripped the a-hole in time, for freak's sake, and you think he'll stop by now? Wonder if Spawn is actually doing more good than harm. Actually, sorry, if Spawn's doing more harm than good, correction. Mark's like, what, you want me to like backstab spawn and and go rogue that's not what i'm saying i just want to make sure our enemies are number one target and it's to the point where if spawn wants to win this war he has to consider allying up like joining forces and Mark, so that's exactly what me and jessica she spawn were trying to do we we're trying to convince him the value of bringing an army so, have, so he doesn't have to do these missions himself and then all of a sudden like a sudden wind gust secure the hell spawn these angel warriors come down and launch an ambush attack in, pro in public jim tells mark grab your helmet put it on just do it so jim puts like a grip on mark's arm and they need to get away from here and moments later like a green arrow bait like blow they materialize several miles away out of public view and jim's like dude there's something wrong they normally don't attack where humans can see him well the game has changed right now and then this vicious attack goes out jim does his green laser beams mark medieval spawn he puts on the helmet forms into medieval spawn and slashes his angel's head head off look at this stuff right here mark delivers a haymaker blow Good. They will not be the last. And Mark's like, I'm going to feast like a medieval spawn. Reason the forces of heaven and hell never launched or dare will launch a public attack. But old rules are coming undone. And the day of spawn's enemies are beginning to realize they need to not hide in the shadows anymore. They're going to go at it in public. So as more angels come to attack medieval spawn and Jim, Jim puts his hand on medieval spawn and teleports him out the way. And medieval spawn's kind of pissed. Like, we don't have the fortitude for battle. Bring your own coward, boy. I'd rather fight my enemies and not run away from them. And Jim's like, then you are a fool. You're using Mark's body, and I'm going to make sure he stays in one piece. And medieval spawn's like, okay. Well, you know, you bear the mark of heaven and hell, so you're like some kind of abomination. Well, that's another story that Jim's going to explain later. So after some dialogue, and it's clear that medieval spawn sees Jim as an ally for now, and he has Mark's best interests at heart, he's like, okay, you're proving yourself useful today. Tomorrow is another test. So he forms back into Mark, and Mark asks, well, did medieval spawn any say anything helpful? I'm afraid not. He just disappeared. But Mark, I need you to remember this. If it weren't for today, would Spawn be here to have you back? Would he even notice you're missing? I mean, I was there with that attack today. Ask yourself, if you have, if you had been captured, or if I hadn't been there, or you weren't able to get that helmet on time, would Al come to rescue me? Crap, would he even notice you're gone? So think about what I said. We will be in touch. And this leaves Mark with something to think about. Now, two days has passed since the confrontation with the Vampire General Rebirth, and that's from the previous issue. You can check that review out, Spawn 323. And the question is, how far is Spawn willing to go to corrupt himself for that potential victory? Because even he's contemplating that he knows he needs to ally with some forces to win this war. And then his gold being appears, wing right spread. Hope you're grasping the severity of the situation we face. So Spawn launches a chain attack. He deflects it. You, you need to preserve your strength. We will need it later. So Spawn's like, okay, 
what is it now? What are, you know? What are we doing here? He unveils himself, you know, disarming himself, showing his face is like, and rebirth is like, now there's a lot we need to discuss, Spawn. I mean, as far as the action, there's not a lot of action going on in here, and that's okay. The dialogue and the conversation were good. They were interesting. It pushed the story forward. I think this was a setup to uh, like a spawn team up. I forgot what that name of that comic is with a spawn team up that's gonna come out in January. So I'm totally on board with it. And I think this is an awesome read, a fun read, great storytelling. And also the art was damn well gangster as well. Link in description if you wish to add spawn issue number 324 to your comic book collection. We begin this issue with the narration of this centurion spawn. Two days ago, he was ambushed. He knew that before long, this moment would come. It was just a question of when. Or if we're suing this guy, he is nothing we joke with. We just see this brother going, getting worked on. If this is going to be the end of him, he will not accept it quietly. And these energy blasts are going crazy. Even though he went to work, it looks like here in this panel, he got worked on. Once upon a time, it was he who brought fear as he was capable of besting entire army single-handedly. Well, he's a long way from home or from his own time now. And the game has changed. Now those armies he used to beat can beat him. Let me die in honor, he says. Others might have granted his request, but his attacker ends it with no mercy as he drags him across the forge, just pretty much disrespecting this spawn. The attacker is known as the Forsaken. Look at this art, man. It just, it ain't just sexy, it's muy sexy. In this panel, we see a protest of over 200,000 people um, descended upon Washington. The protesting is going on about Al Simmons issued a plea several months ago calling on people around the world to demand greater transparency from their leaders. It's not clear who these people are in the building watching above, but it is clear that the protest is not good for business, whatever that business is. The girl in the short black hair, her name is Cordelia. She wants to calm things down, but the girl in red, who is also muy sexy, thinks this protest is a harmless little outlet for people to vent their frustrations and just to let it run its course. Cordelia's not having it. She feels the longer this protest goes on without putting a cap on it, someone's gonna pry into their business and figure out the truth, even if they discover it by accident. And that's only going to make things harder on them as the war ramps up. So these are angels that are stuck on Earth. Cordelia knows that they need to be dealing with Spawn. If we don't, someone else will. I believe that's a reference to Spawn 323 with Rebirth. The vampire there told Spawn that eventually he needs to ally with somebody to win this war. You can check out the comic book review on that as well. The throne of hell isn't going to stay empty forever. In her eyes, Spawn cannot be the one to take the throne of hell. In her eyes, Spawn cannot be the one to take the throne of hell. He'll destroy them. So their plan is to stay on the sidelines and wait for the contenders to reveal themselves. And once they feel they see a likely winner, that's when they'll make a decision on who to side with. She feels by doing this, they'll have leverage to have Spawn join their side. And this guy asked her a question I'm definitely thinking about. Why not just put one of our own on the throne? Because even if you do take the throne, you will always have a target on your back. But if you were one or two steps away from the top of it, it allows us to change sides and attack, says Cordelia. Since Al told his story to the public, it's time to tell humans a different narrative. Let's see where this goes. Now we see the media flipping the script on Spawn. Several months ago, Al Simmons made a flurry of controversial media appearances. Since those announcements, he hasn't made any further public appearances. So Simmons, if you're out there, we'd like to offer you a national forum to expand on your statements. Al never intend to become a public figure. He just wanted to give humanity a little nudge to the right direction to uncover the truth. This brother doesn't even have the time to embrace being a celebrity. New threats and bull jive take up this brother's time. Though he hates to admit it, there's only one man who can help him fix that problem. And that man is Arnold. Yeah, Arnold, like not Arnold, but Arnold. <laughs> He got to be kidding me with this Arnold. Joking, choking Arnold, Spawn squeezes Arnold's windpipe to ask where Carlyx Yostro is at. Why are you doing this to me? I'm Arnold. <laughs> Just kidding. Spawn asks Cog's whereabouts one more time. We had a falling out a long time ago, says Arnold. Spawn's like, is that so? Well, I saw him recently. He seems like he's got himself into some trouble referencing Spawn's universe. You can check out the comic book review on that one, by the way. And also link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. Arnold tells Spawn he doesn't know where Cog is at. So Spawn decides to go on a hunt for Calicio to start chasing down leads. Everywhere go Spawn goes, the answer is the same. No one has seen a trace of Calicio in months. The last time Spawn crossed past him was 
on Omega Island while both were prisoners of the Disruptor. Spawn is not sure if Cog's found a way to escape. Well, he thinks about it and he remembers how tired and feeble Cog had looked. Perhaps he didn't escape. Spawn himself barely survived the two trips to the island and doesn't want to risk a third trip unless it's absolutely necessary. If he can't find Cog, he may have no choice. If one thing that Cog knows better than anything else, it's Hell Spawns. The terror that Spawn created in time may possibly be fixed only by the knowledge of Cogs. Spawn spends the next few hours chasing leads until he beats enough ass and he comes across the name Lucen Fagretto, which is the last person that came into contact with Cogs. And he also looks like a discount Walmart version of Kingpin. No disrespect, the art's still good though. He's on heaven's side in theory, but he'll work with anyone who can advance him. Whoever Spawn gave a beat down to tells him the location of Homeboy. When Spawn arrives, the stench of death hits Spawn before he goes through the door. The wounds appear fresh, and whoever did the killing is most likely still here. He kicks open the door, Spawn enters the room, whatever this is from further disemboweling a dead for Gretto, our boy just can't catch a break on this one. Like a wild wolf and launches his attack on Spawn. Animal Planet hail Spawn style, anyone? He launches his Spawn to do an attack. but. Then we get this cliffhanger panel where it takes us away from the showdown that we all wanted to see. We go into an operation room where Dr. Gerard Milner or Dr. Milner is performing some kind of test on this creature that has four hearts. He's called to end the surgery because the boss is here unannounced. Who is this boss? That boss is Cordelia. She tells Dr. Miller that she's got all the specimens that he's requested and they're all waiting for him in the pen. Once you've made your final selection, we can start making arrangements for its release. She wants him to run a few assessments first to make sure they're up to the task. Dr. Miller is not too sure and doubts that because some of them, they're, they're in a vulnerable state, so he's not sure if some of those specimens are even ready. She clearly isn't worried about it. If we break it, we can afford it. After all, we got plenty to choose from and we end the issue with all these other hell spawns waiting in this undisclosed location with its underground out of nowhere but i'm not sure where this story is setting up to be i imagine it's setting up for the for the scorch that's coming out in a few weeks I, as far as this issue goes i think it's a good issue it's a filler issue did i dig it as much as the previous issues not so much but i mean it's it's a filler and we'll see where this story goes i'm not you know i'm not hating on it it's just my personal opinion but hey link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection with that being said spawn issue number 325 what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know and also if you like the content we're throwing up you know what to do don't be shy don't be stingy here at rated comics we do awesome comic book reviews comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway thanks again for watching until next time.